Hi everyone, the following video is a recording from our 24th Artist Feedback AMA session held within the Meta Jungle Discord on September 30th. This session was hosted by the talented Mike Schmidt and Savode Shetty, and they reviewed and gave feedback on 11 different NFT collections and editions in this session. We want to thank them for their time, as well as everyone who was able to attend and all the artists that submitted their artwork for review. We hope you find this useful, and with that, let's go on ahead and get into it. And so the first collection we're looking at today is called Almost Nothing, and it's by um, Jose Casal. And um, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of Jose's work. I actually really enjoy it. Um, it's very minimalistic. So a collection, uh, collection of four on foundation. Um, doesn't have any sales yet. Floor price is 0 0.369 ETH. I'll take a look at the description. So almost nothing is a personal study about minimalism photography. I went in search of the contrast of the deep and dynamism of very well studied compositions uh, with the calm feeling of the huge negative space of the long exposure seascapes. The perfect harmony is the feeling of serenity and movement at the same time. Very cool. I love the artist statement. It's beautifully written. Doesn't give anything away about the work, but you know, just a little description about like, you know, the peace and harmony and serenity of calmness and what he's trying to create through uh, through minimalism. I'm a huge fan of, of minimalism. I, I really, I love the idea of, uh, of less, less being more and, um, you know, not much going on in the frame and it leaves, uh, leaves a lot up to our own personal imagination. So uh, looking at this shot, this one is called The Guide. It says, um, almost nothing is a personal study about minimalism photography. I went in search of the contrast of the deep and dynamism of very well studied compositions, the calm feeling of huge negative space and long exposure seascapes. Okay, so this is basically the description, um, the same description from um, the main order statement. And then, so he's got title, uh, name, this, these are one of one editions, and he's taken them in Spain. And he, he, he classifies these as fine art landscape. I would too. Uh, first one, this was one I'm looking at, it's called the guide. And so you can see it, you could see in the image that the, um, the lines coming from this here that have this little just bl this blur to it, so you, you can really tell that he's taking these with a with a long exposure, like it says. Something I really love about his images is that you can't tell where the horizon line of the water and the sky meet. It sort of all fades into one. It's wild, and you can see the clouds up here, and you can see the reflections on the water, but you can't tell where the water ends. I mean, the water could end here, could end here. Can't tell where it ends. So it, it winds up being just one, one beautiful minimalistic piece. I really appreciate that about uh, Jose's work. And then you can see the detail in the, um, in the elements of the frame that are not moving, that are standing still, even while his shutter is, uh, is held open for a long time, so. Wonderful image, beautiful leading lines just out into uh, out into infinity. Take a look at another one. And this one is called the arrow. Um, another really beautiful minimalistic image. I love this one um, because I can't really tell um, I can't even tell really what we're looking at here. I don't know if these are, are, are buoys um, that are put out by uh, fishermen, but it looks like they're uh, they have an atta they're attached to this uh, this stick that just comes straight up the water. And, and once again, uh, you can't tell the difference between um, you know where his horizon lines and the skies meet. It forms this beautiful image, but. While I don't know really what I'm looking at here, I just, I'm really just like entranced by um, just how simple it is, just the shapes and the design. And it's just like a really, really beautiful image. I love how there's this, this like this, this pop of these little red, um, they're buoys or not, these red flotation devices along this that just pop within the rest of the, of the color of just a blue, a cool blue scene.
I didn't look at the first one. This is called actually number one. And I guess, well, it's the first image he minted, but I believe it's called number one because it's um, it's spray painted here with the, uh, with the number one on it. And it almost looks like it's um, it's a seat in the middle of the water. And it has this like a bamboo, um, you know, backing to the, uh, to the seat, which is really cool. It's an interesting shot. Another one where you just can't really, you don't really, you don't really know exactly what you're looking at. It's that level of minimalism. It's really beautiful. So he asks a question. Um, he says, uh, Jose says, I raised the price compared with latest pieces that sold out. How is price, how is that price strategy long-term? So, I mean, I think it's a good idea, right? So if you if your last pieces had sold out at a lower uh, price and, and they're within a collection, I don't think it's a bad idea to raise the uh, the price. I mean, I don't think it's a good idea to raise it drastically. Like you, it doesn't look like you raised anything drastically at 0 0.369. I'm guessing your last piece is probably around the same, um, on the same price point. Um, let me try to take a look here. Let's see. What is this Twitter? Probably take a look at what he's done on Sloika. I'm guessing this is some stuff that's sold out in here. Sold out here. And he goes to church. Yeah, these are beautiful. And once again, keeping that, you know, that similar style where you can't tell where the horizon meets the sea. And you get these really, really beautiful sort of ghostly uh, reflections. But I really came here to check out the price of this collection. Um, let's see. Unavailable. Do you get information? No, I don't know exactly. I'm guessing he probably was, you know, under the price that he's currently selling for now, which is uh, 0 0.3 and change, probably 0 0.2. I, I would have probably sold these for 0 0.25 starting on, on OpenSea. But yeah, I think that's, you know, I think that's the right thing to do. Um, I think it's positive for your trajectory as an artist to, um, to slowly raise, um, to slowly raise your prices while you, um, while you create new collections. And this is cool. I didn't see these troopers last soul. Just uh some collections on here. Foundation. Oh, this is when I think foundation didn't force us into um creating collections. So you can see uh, this is the thing about love about Jose is you see his work and you know that this is Jose's work, like you know, whatever it is, it doesn't have to have his name on it. But you just know that it's it's made by him because it always it always has that signature minimalism and that signature um, his signature ability to just separate um, separate the sea from the sky and not separate it but kind of merge it into one. So beautiful job uh, above the work. Anything else yet? Right. Probably move on to the next collection there if that's the case. I think they're working uh I think they're working together and <clears throat> Yeah, I'm talking chat. to him. Not yet. Okay, cool man. No problem. You let me know if anything uh if anything does change. Okay, cool. So we'll move on to the next collection. This collection is um Panthera. I believe that's how you say it. And this is by uh Brijesh. Uh, AKA the doctor, AKA he doesn't want to be called the doctor anymore. So don't call him the doctor. If Sabod, uh, if Sabod's mic was working, he would be call, saying, no, call him doctor. <laughs> but um, we love Brajesh. He's great. Um, he's, he's been super supportive all through, um, all through the market. And he's, he's been here through the bear market as well. And so um, let's take a look at uh, some of the work in Panthera here. I'll take a look at the description first. So, this collection will feature images taken from the wilderness of Deer Forest, which is the last home of Asiatic lions uh, in the world. Through this series, I wish to share their interesting stories about these majestic species. So this is a different place um, 
then we're seeing a lot of the wildlife photography come from, which is, um, is it, is it uh, Mas Masimara? Masimara, I believe, in India. Um, this is the deer forest. So the images do look different here. Um, so what, uh, what Patricia has been doing, he says, uh, in his question, he says, is it a good idea to mint one piece at a time? Um, I minted the second after the first got collected. So the first one was collected here. It looks like by Alpha Trilogy for 0 0.20, His Majesty. Um, and then it looks like Rajesh came and minted the second one. Um, I haven't personally done that exactly. You know, with my collection, you know, I mint, um, it's, my collection will be 100. I have 60 right now. I mint 20 at a time. Um, so it's a similar idea, um, except, you know, 20 gives more of an idea of like, I guess the, the story and what it's about than one does. But I think with wildlife, it's a bit different, right? We know that, um, we know it's photos of, uh, these majestic animals in the wild. So, uh, I don't think it's a bad idea. I think the first piece released is a really, really beautiful piece. Um, his majesty, you know, I was speaking in a space recently about how, the wildlife photographers always figure out this way to show a different character within um, with the within these animals and these lions, especially where, you know, I you know the only place before you know fine art NFT space or whatever, um, I saw this stuff was maybe in Nat Geo magazines or, um, you know, on on television Discovery Channel and stuff, but I really never looked into the personality of um of them and 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 have been able to like instinctually be able to see different personality within um portraits of the lions and i think um i think Rajesh did a, a a really really great job here of um of showing this 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 moment of of this uh it almost feels like a um a vulnerable moment coming from you know this this lion and and it's beautiful to see the um you know the scars um under the eyes here and on the nose it, it looks like this lion has obviously um had to fight for some stuff and it's in its time and it's just it's it's wonderfully emotional uh it feels you know as um, as emotional uh if not as more emotional than some human portraits i've seen so it's, it's a beautiful take it's beautiful to see that with uh, with photography so let's look at the um, uh, this soul the Alpha Trilogy for zero point two. Let's take a look at the, uh, the second one that was just minted recently. This is called Guardian, and I think it's a perfect name for this. Um, and what really stood out to me in this image was the triple eyes, like the three eyes, because I don't, I don't, I don't see that very often. I mean, I think the only way for that to really come through with an image in wildlife like this is for um, you know the two two animals to be very close to one another to their for their heads to overlap uh, and to and to create that which is just this it's I don't want to say illusion because it's not an illusion but it's 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 this beautiful separation if, and if you look at the separation between the eyes they're almost um, separated at an, at an identical distance of each other the only different thing you have here is that the um, the lion in the back's eyes are, are have a bit uh, there's a brightness to it, right? They look a bit more, more yellow. In this thing, right? But the entire girl in front has got an image. It's a fantastic shot. I hear the wildlife photographers talking about how a lot of them could take somewhat of a similar shot because they're all sitting in the same, you know, they're all sitting in the same the safari truck together, right? But um, But this is one of those shots where it's like, this probably happens pretty quickly. You know, I'm, 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 I'm pretty sure the lion doesn't stay behind a uh, little lioness or whatever you call it uh, for that long, giving this gaze of the three eyed gaze. So this, this seems like a rare shot within rare shots to me. So uh, I think it's really, really great. Uh, it's cool. You have a, they have, he has a, a reserve of 0 0.30, which is above the last sale, which was 0 0.20. Uh, and a buy it now of 0.40. I think that's fair. Um, I think that that's a good uptick in pricing. I don't think it's too drastic, um, but I think it's an, I think it's enough to um, you know make an uptick uh, with an image that I I think is um, is equally as strong, if not 
can possibly be even stronger than the first image listed for me because of the the rareness in the moment with the, with the two of them and, and the triple eyes. So, yeah, commendable work. I love seeing, uh, I, I love seeing what's coming out um, from this artist lately. It's definitely pushing boundaries and uh, putting out new work. So, um, love the collection and uh, can't wait to see to see what comes uh, what comes after this. And if uh, if Rajesh uh, is here, uh, if he's unmuted, probably unmute if um, if Boone has you unmuted, if you wanted to talk about the work, or, uh, you know, what it's like being in the, uh, it was the gear, uh, yeah, gear forest. And if you've been to um, Masamara, if I'm saying it correctly, and what are the differences for you? Yeah, what's the username? It's Brijesh, B R I J E S H. You know what? Maybe he's not here. Actually, I thought yeah, he was. He's, he's not here. He's, he's not here. All right. Well, he'll hear the um, he'll hear the uh, the recording of this one. But really beautiful work, Brijesh. We all love you here. So excellent. Um, cool. I can I can then move on to the next collection here. Um, next collection collection is uh, Under the Snow, and it's by um by M. Uh, Barak uh, Kina Salar, I believe that's how you say it. And so, Under the Snow, it's a, it, it's a cold winter, days of snow, the power of white, the fear of silence. It's the most beautiful gift of the winter months. Millions of grains of water falling from the sky to the ground as if graded. As the poet Metin, uh Altiak says in his poem, There is snow in the days we live in. Despair surrounds us. Famine is on the agenda. Against the odds, though, I keep it carefully in my heart. My love for you, I'm covered in snow. It descends from the sky like a wedding dress of love. Have a good time. Beautiful. Um, interesting artist statement. Um, you know, well written by the artist, and then also a uh, little poetry in there too. That's um, that's some beautiful poetry as well. I have sort of my own love affair with the snow um, in New York City as well. How it drapes the uh, the city and turns it into um, this sort of uh, this sort of winter wonderland, even though it's a, a large uh, metropolis. Um, I think it does that to everywhere, everywhere where it happens. So let's um. Let's take a look into uh, some of the photos. The only question you have is on pricing. Um, we'll take a look at that after, though. So I believe these are, I believe they're one of ones. It doesn't, there's nothing that says there are. Click on a piece that stood out to me. Um, let the snow fall on us. And so like, let's take a look first at the, what we have here. So, as the poet said, let the snow fall on us. Snow covers everything. It's nature's gift, nature's uh, anger. Sometimes it's destructive, sometimes it leaves the water that is essential for life. Um, okay, cool. It's a one, one of one. So yeah, one of you're talking. We're talking about pricing before anything else. Zero point zero six uh, for one of one uh, is very cheap, uh, in my opinion. It's, you know, one of one. It's the only one that there is. Um, not familiar with your your past price history and sales? We can take a look into that after. But zero point zero six. If I see that, I usually think it's uh, within an addition. Uh, maybe an addition of 10 or so at that price. But uh, yeah, so um, really good price point if you guys are looking to pick up something really beautiful as a one of one. Um, the shot's gorgeous. Love this. I, I love the, um, I love the just the reflection you have here. You know, sometimes for me with reflections, sometimes it's too much when I, when I see the whole reflection. And sometimes it's really beautiful and you just see just a part of it. And with this image, you just see a part of it. Because we don't have a full puddle here, we have um, sort of parts that are dry, not dry within the puddle, but, you know, are just wet but not full puddle, and so you don't get that full-on reflection. But in this image, uh, that's fine for me. My eye kind of goes right to the subject here, um, with the with that snowy umbrella. It looks to be like a man or woman walking um, you know, away from us. Could be could be towards, could be away, um, could be either or. So. It's kind of left up to your interpretation, but uh, beautiful composition and just lovely, uh, you know, lovely snowscape. 
I love a beautiful snowscape. Especially... Mike. Hey, what's up? Is that Sabaul? Ah, finally. Um, another shot here. This is, you know, it's, it's uh, so, you know, one thing I will say about the shots in this collection that they're, uh, very, the, the compositions are, are very similar. So everything uh, seems to be like this sort of uh, head on composition. We're not seeing very daring perspectives or anything like that. We're just getting this, uh, you know, but there are, you know, the, the compositions are good. Um, and, you know, but I, I would like to see, you know, some, but some more daring compositions in a sense where, you know, maybe getting a little lower to the ground, um, showing us perspective, maybe sh shot some stuff through the trees and such. But, you know, wonderful little moment here. Uh, looks like a couple, you know, walking through this winter wonderland. Um, you know, trash cans in the front for me, you know, a little bit distracting in the frame. Um, you know, personally, I mean, maybe if you had the time, probably could have pushed that out of your frame, you know, waited for something to happen. I don't know if you had that that time on something like that. Um, this shot, though, um, I will say had, had been, you know, one of the more daring compositions for me. And, you know, more, more to think about here with my imagination that there's this sort of fork in the road. Um, and it looks like a woman here chose to, you know, to go right on the fork. Um, and, you know, beautiful little re reflection here. I was talking before that, you know, sometimes I don't, I don't enjoy seeing the whole reflection of a figure and just seeing somewhat of a partial reflection. is just sometimes really beautiful and leads you right into the subject. But I think the black and white, um, black and white tonality is done really, really well here. Um, and I, and I just love the, uh, I, I, I love that there's a, there's a fork in the road and, and a separation here. It separates uh, for me, from from some of those other images. Uh, Sabo, do you have anything on that? Yeah, I think uh, when I went through this collection, uh, I had the very same uh, opinion, which is uh, repetition. You know, like when you see the first two images, uh, the first one and the second one, they're really strong, and then it starts filtering off because it becomes more of repetition, and the composition is falling a little bit weaker, especially with the two guys. Uh, that image, it's an in between shot. You know, there's no real uh what do you say extraordinary moment happening there with the two guys even their body posture is kind of very stiff uh so yeah i think that's something we need you know i keep a lot of uh what do you say i put a lot of pressure on myself when i'm curating my work to make sure that i only show the top of the top because after that you're only diluting the whole collection so the first two were really strong the next two could be something else from the scene you know like you said in the fourth image, there is water, and the reflection could have led to some other kind of an image. Maybe a cat walking through the water and reflection, and the, uh, all the you know beautiful trees without the leaves. So there could there was a possibility to explore here. The first two are really really good, but then I think it kind of falls short. When you when and you talk about, about the, the mm, first two, mm, when you please? when you're saying first two, do you have them as recently listed, or do you have them from the oldest listed? So what's the name I'm of the talking, first two? Uh, I'm going as per what I'm seeing on the screen right now. So days of uh, snow and a warm winter. Oh, no, sorry. Days of snow and let the snow fall on us. Okay. So you, yeah. So that's on your screen. You're not. You're not looking at my screen. Screen right now. It's called yeah, uh, days of snow. Yeah, yeah, I'm sharing my screen. Mine's Days of Snow is the first one, and then Warm Winter is the second one. Yeah, uh, the first one is Day Days of Snow, which is for me a very good composition. Not only because mm -hmm. it's a human element, but also on the road, you can see some kind of a texture and everything leading into one uh, horizon. So it has a lot of elements which goes together because composition is all about that, those small, small things coming together to make an image. For me, this image definitely... It's a very strong one. And the other one is, uh, if you can uh, go to the collection again, please. Yeah, the fourth one, let the snow fall on us. Yeah, that's a very strong composition because we know, you know, photographers love uh, umbrellas and whenever there's an umbrella, it just adds that extra element of uh, beauty to it. You know, it's like a movie scene. So it's a beautifully well-composed image with all the reflections, uh, very, uh, very, very surreal uh, landscape and all that. But after that, the next two images, which are right now in the center of the collection, they yes. are kind of falling short. Yeah, for me, the second one has a kind of a tilted horizon kind of a feel uh, that feels a little bit 
hard to watch that horizon is tilting towards yeah. the left it could be yeah. more towards the left a bit there yeah, and, and as a photographer a, a as you said, you know, you look, yeah as a photographer i look at that water and i just ask myself why didn't the photographer go closer and create something with that reflection because anything it could be a cat walking through that water it could be a human it could be kids playing in that in that reflection you know that reflection could have been elevated so uh, that possibility is visible and that's what as a photographer our mind works that way uh, so the, so the way to the way to create that possibility I, i've been learning this a lot and what i'm out shooting is that i find the location that i like and a composition and then i wait a long time like some of the shots exactly. i've recently taken i've waited like 30 45 minutes um to one hour before and then then i'll come out with like you know uh 40 different images and they're all completely different but then i get to choose from you know from one of them and so you're saying you know with more time at this location and spot and maybe getting lower to the reflection or waiting for um, an animal or something to come into the frame too to, to even give more into the, the left side path um that's some, something more could be created here maybe even maybe even two people going down a different path right exactly exactly you know like uh finding the scene is like finding a canvas and then what you paint on it is up to you it comes with a lot of waiting as you said so uh, definitely there was a possibility here and the fourth one with the two guys uh, for me that is definitely uh the weak link in the collection because it's a very strong collection otherwise but that fourth mm -hmm. image is kind of the two guys are very very stiff uh it just doesn't feel that it doesn't have the flow and of course the garbage uh, uh can you know yeah. the thing yeah bin it doesn't add up to the beauty of the image yeah i mentioned that earlier so yeah, yeah. this I, i would probably we have more cropped like a you know a four or five or or something in the center to remove the, the trash cans but you know uh, but yeah i, I, yeah, I, I know. agree with you there's something What's really compelling on the there's pricing 0.06 it's low i mean well first of all i want to talk about this this is this one really is um a really compelling image and i hadn't i hadn't really even opened it and looked at it as much and, until you talked about it but just seeing the way his arms are crossed kind of creates the same pattern that's that's created in the front of the image here and it's just and yeah. how dark how dark his suit is he stands out so well in the rest of the gradient and so 0.06 I think is low for a one yeah. of one because they're one of ones, right? So usually when I see 0.06, I go, oh, this is an addition of 10, you know, or something like that. So um, their question was on the pricing. They just said pricing with question mark. And so, um, yeah, I mean, so yeah. Sometimes uh, low price is happening nowadays because of the bear market, I guess. But anyway, we're going to wait in this bear market. So why not make it a little bit pricey and wait for it? rather than keep it low and wait for it. Yeah, I mean even if it's priced at 0.1 or like 0.15, like why not yeah. why not wait? Yeah. yeah, why not why not wait? Um, you know, let's see the artist has anything from other collection. I know I know this Yeah, I mean 0. 0.0 whatever feels almost like uh, addition kind of a pricing, you know, especially 0. 0.06, 0.05 or anything below that is more of addition. So 0.1 is not too pricey, you know, if you're looking at targeting collectors, they won't mind, you know, 0.06 versus 0.1. So it's about us and our patients. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, it looks like the artists lowered their prices because this, this was created in April, this collection, the streets of my home. Um, this is, uh, the streets of, and these are 0 0.11, right. And, yeah. um, you know, I, I honestly, I think the um, I think the images here are actually stronger. These documentary style images to me are are, are a stronger suit than um, you know what the artist is is currently showing. I'm sorry, the open sea takes a really long time for these images to open up lately. I don't know why. Um, they had something to do with them. They had a resolution issue, and now they now the photos take a long time to load. But um, yeah, I think. Uh, Let's look at let's look at a, a few of these images. It's a very documentary and a portrait. You know, let's look at some of the other work that the artist has put out. Um, this is happy people stories. 
just a few collections going on here right now. Yeah, this one, there's no, they're, they're not listed. Um, these are very, these are very different from, from what I've seen from the artists uh, as far as black and white and stuff goes. I don't, I don't yeah, think the these previous are, collection, yeah. Well, previous collection okay. was really strong, the one with the documentary kind of a work. I would rather put all my force on that, you know, instead of releasing something new, I would rather make that work, which is already there, which is really strong. It's just a matter of time and in bear market, we need that extra patience. So I would be sticking with that, uh, then releasing one more new collection, you trust me. Yeah, there's no history on this collection either. And so like, I, you know, it's rather than having all these collections that are put out, you know, this one is May. So the other collection you put out in April, then you put out this collection in May. I think you're just minting too much. I, I would focus more, like Sabod said, on the, the ones that were strong. That other collection was a lot stronger. There's there's not much um, story that's tied together in these, and and these images, are as even as even as a, a, a single images, aren't nearly as strong as some of the compositions we're creating in 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 previous collection. So yeah. I think that's really good advice. But yeah. And so, and then he has an additional. I mean, even I'm in just... this, uh, even in this black and white uh, collection with zero point zero six, he he could have simply, you know, another idea could be just choosing the best of that. You know, like for instance, in the black and white collection, which was being discussed, uh, the one with the snow, yeah, here. Yeah. I uh, mm -hmm. I would rather take the under the snow image, uh, which is the strongest of this collection right now. It's the fourth image. So I would rather take that image, make it an edition, maybe 10 editions at 0 0.03 and make that image earn more. It will earn as much as this whole collection, a single image as an edition, uh, rather than push four images, which uh, with two of them, which are like a weak link. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Oversupply, oversupply, yeah. Yeah, oversupply in general um, with this, because there's a lot of collections here, right? And, we, and then you have my, uh, and like this is this is another like really strong collection. Like look at these, but but there's there's nothing sold, you know. Um, and this was minted August twenty twenty two, June July. So this is more recent, um, more recent than than the other two collections that we looked at. Not the snowy one, but the other two. So, um, yeah, I you know. <laughs> Yeah, I would focus certainly on on uh, you know selling out a collection at a time rather than releasing so many collections because like you're a great photographer like a lot of these are really strong like look at this photograph like beautiful very beautiful um, yeah but and for a one of one it's 148 USD um, you know there's some just some gorgeous photographs in here and so um, yeah just over minting minting too much. And then, you know, you, you, you have to focus too many different collections to talk about. So, and this one here is 0 0.08. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. It creates, it creates a confusion, you know, when there are so many things, we don't know exactly what photographer is trying to say, because every day you see something new. Uh, for instance, if I look at any other photographer who is sticking to one collection at a time, it becomes like a signature. We know exactly what is selling. There may be an addition as an extra. But that addition anyway keeps on moving on itself. So that one of one could be sitting in bear market. We can work on it every single day. And meanwhile, to just keep the flow, one or two additions in between, uh, rather than putting one after the other collections and just being stuck with so many. Because this is such a great collection. This, Simply this focusing color, on this would work. This color collection? Yeah, yeah, I so, mean, there are so many good images here. Every day in the morning, every week, for instance, you can take one image per week from the collection and push it as much as possible. And meanwhile, release one edition and let it go on the other side so that we have a clear impression of what the photographer is all about. Right now, if I think of Burak, I don't know exactly what's his signature because I saw so many things right now within the next, within the last 10 minutes. Yeah, in his edition album here. I know we're spending a lot of time on this one, but it, I think it's smart because, um, you know, because it's the artist is putting is minting out a lot of work, and, and this is kind and of what 0. I know. Zero one five. I mean, zero point zero one five for a one of one. Is that a one of one? Yeah, it is. No, these. Well, no, it's editions. Editions. 
these ones are additions. These are 0 0.015 um, foundry log, I believe. Well, it's still up for sale, so it must not be sold out. He, he has he, he has three left. So Leslie Spurlock, Alpha, a few people own this. Um, but yeah, um, lots of juggling here, right? Because there's so many different collections. I mean, how could you... How could you market all of these collections at one time? How could you tell the story for all these at one time? Me personally, I would I would delete the collections where there's no sales or anything. Um, even like, so sorry, the this color collection that we talked about, um, there's no sales on it. Like, it's a really strong collection, but so is. So is this collection that was minted April. This is brilliant, yeah. Yeah, so like, you know, there's still a lot of unsold pieces here. Actually, there's only one sold piece. So I would I would remove the I would remove the colored collection and all of all any other unsold work that you have and just focus on getting a sold out collection. Um otherwise you just um it seems like you're just uh, over minting and saturating your own market and making it difficult for you to tell the story of each one, making it difficult for um, us to understand your identity as an artist, and then also making it difficult for collectors to understand, um, you know, what their what their risk to what, what their risk ratio is when 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 buying from um, a collector who has so much minted work. I think that's that's all they really have to say um, when it comes down to it, but really really great work just too much minted sure, sure. cool um with that said i think we help i think that, uh, that's a lot for that artist and i think that um they, they could work on some stuff i think we really helped out with that so and, and hopefully other people that are just minting a lot as well to think about you know what is your strongest strongest work and to kind of focus on that and tell the story of that so with that we'll move on to the next collection um, which is uh wildlife and this is by uh, Barack um, Dogen uh, uh, Dogen Soisal or D Dogen Soisal. I think it's how you say it. Um, check this out. And so this is um, this is a collection minted on Foundation. It does have some sales owned by four people. Read the description. So uh, the this is a collection of nine images. is a brief reflection of my passion for wildlife. Over the past 18 years, I've been to 64 countries on five continents to photograph beautiful animals in their natural habitats, trying to create awareness for endangered species and habitat loss. From Asia to South America, from Africa to polar regions, I've traveled and photographed thousands of animal species. And these nine photos are some of my favorites, capturing animals in harmony with their surroundings. Okay, interesting uh, artist statement. It's a little bit broad. Um, we're not focusing on any specific region here. Sounds like the artist is just sort of taking their favorite images as like as if it's a portfolio and and minting those. And so my first impression when I looked at this, this kind of overall felt a little bit general in a sense. Like, I mean, we have this close up. Let's just look at the ones that sold. If we just look at the three that sold even, they they feel... Uh, well, maybe the the um this um this 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 uh, monkey or gorilla one here s seems in the same uh same uh genre collection as eye to eye on the tiger one, but this 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 blue one, uh, bear in the mist, stands out in the collection um, compared to many others. I also think that king of the mountain, the color grading on that shot is quite different than um, some of the color gradings on some of the other ones. So, you know, after looking at, at some of that, because I just want to address the question that they had, before I even looked at the artist collection, I always look at the work, because it is, is my collection too general? Should it be more focused? Um, another collection was um, wildlife is niche. Uh, should I diversify in, in this space to other genres? Um, and then, and then another question was, you know, one, should I have one collection at a time or should I introduce many collections? People have different, uh, theories on this. So that, that's a lot of different questions, but I'll, 
first I'd like to just focus on the work before we even get into any of that. Um, there's some, there is some brilliant work here, right? Like look at this, um, look at this shot here. Um, you know, Sabote, I mean, you're a, you're a wildlife uh, photographer. So like this moment with this reflection, um, you know, probably not the easiest moment to capture. You want to talk on, on this at all or? Yeah, I mean, Burak's work, I know very well. Uh, he's a very established photographer. And whatever he's doing, he's doing it with a great intention. And he has a lot of care to his work. So that's the uh, first thing. And this image, of course, you know, it's not easy to get a lion drinking water. You know, I've been going for the last one year. I never found a lion drinking water like this because it's not easy to find such moments. So definitely all his work is absolutely stunning. For me, as I said, you know, that uh, image with the blue, it doesn't fit into this collection overall because it just stands out. I would rather save that blue image for some other day because it's a very, very powerful image of the bear in the fog. Uh, the one bluish one. Yeah, this one. Yeah, it is. It's a great image. It's, yeah, I would save it maybe for some other day. Maybe it, it, it's sold. It's sold. Maybe it's, it's super rare. It, it, yeah, it's I know. It's sold I know. already. Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But that's what you but would have done. It, you would have, yeah. A one of one. I, yeah. yeah, when you see it as a whole, it, this image doesn't fit into that. Even otherwise, it's just wildlife, so it's all good. You know, they're all in one big category of wildlife. But uh, even otherwise, you know, for me, apart from that, all the images are great. The giraffe image is for me the easiest one because I do wildlife and kind of understand the level of hard work we need to do for these kind of shots. But this one for me, Burak would definitely agree. It's kind of more or less an uh, easy shot, anything which can be repeated easily for me that shots i usually try to avoid uh but yeah for me that image is this you know and it was minted on my birthday i just saw it it's april 12th so <laughs> yeah it doesn't it doesn't stand out to me as much as a moment like obviously the the bear in the mist um the lion drinking the water um you know the gorilla here uh, am i saying it right i'm not sure exactly the species yeah. curiosity gorilla. yeah um, and even the Leopard, the elephant. Such a beautiful, yeah. uh, the first one. Yeah, it's such a yeah. brilliant composition. Yeah, you know, it's just it's a much more. It feels like a much more not just not just rare moment, but you can feel the emotion in the leopard in this, right? Where it's, I don't know, it's a little harder with the three, um, you know, the three giraffes that you have there. It feels like you said like a scene that's easy, more easily repeatable. Where this scene, this this shot feels like a oh wow that's a that's a great find right, and even even combined yeah. within within the colors that the leopard really stands out within these within this colored color background phenomenal shot. Yeah, it's in its true habitat, you know, sitting on a tree. So this is such a lovely image. I wish I had this, but all the images, even the elephant with the big tree in the background, it's such yeah. a beauty. I, I definitely told... needs uh, more eyes on his work. You know, these are all brilliant work. Yeah, this elephant, which is like, yeah, I love this one too. Thing. Because you could feel the movement. You know, you could feel the movement yeah. in the elephant, like he in that, and his trunk is 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 flaying off to the to the right, and his 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 ears are opened up big like Dumbo, and the background is is just beautiful exactly. too, right? The background is because I want to talk of background, Jurassic, almost Jurassic, beautiful. Jurassic, yeah, it's a great word for it. So it's like considering the subject, but also I, I'm noticing that a lot in, in wildlife too, is that, you know, some of the wildlife that I see, yeah, it's like a strong shot but of the of the um of the actual animal. But when it's a strong shot of the animal and and it's a and the environment is is incredible, it's just it's it's just, you know, it brings it to another level, right? Yeah, it brings it to another level. Like this shot, for instance, it's, it's a beautiful shot. Right? I love I love all the tangerine eyes, you know, and the and there. I, I actually I love the, the formation that they're in too. And I can only imagine too if if even the background was more elaborate, right? Like if this grass led out to you know I don't know some brown mountains or something like that. I think it's you know, and I'm sure it's it's tough with these these uh, these lenses that compress um you know a lot within the image but um you but know even, how, how much uh, go ahead yeah for this for this image even burak if he's in the room right now he would agree 
cheetahs have this amazing talent to be very very photogenic you know they know exactly how to sit together the typical cat you know they organize themselves when they are three or four they sit in such a symmetrical way that i am sure burak if he digs into his uh, hard drive after this moment there should be another few moments where these guys sat together in a very symmetrical way so that would be really really cool this this for me as a wildlife photographer it feels a bit a little bit easier than his other work you know when you look at that elephant with that great background or that uh, bear with the foggy background compared to all this this cheetah image is something which can be quite easy you know that x factor is missing uh, as you said the background doesn't have much and even animals are a bit scrambled in my opinion they they have much more better way of formations every now and then yeah it makes sense in the first two images they don't they don't feel easy right these first yeah. two shots and they're not collected either spotted cat dwarf giant they don't seem like easy moments to get because when you you're combining that background with that with that foreground and the the feeling of the movement from the the elephant and the and the emotional feeling that you get from the cat um i can see what you're saying yeah, i mean if that elephant image was mine i would not sell it for less than one ethereum i mean it's such a beauty it's such a rarity to get all those things going together his trunk the background that image for me is the literally the stand out in this collection it's such a beauty yeah it's great it is i like them so between that one and and the art collection it would be really well quite amazing yeah you see so much intensity and i love the color uh i love the color contrast between the greens and the browns and the yeah. it's just a beautiful shot yeah i i do agree with that so you see that a lot with a lot of photographers where you like you know what they're capable of you know and the moment that they can capture is a much harder moment to capture um and then you and then you see some stuff that's that's that you know is a lot easier for them as a photographer because you know that you know the caliber that they really work at. so i think that's yeah. an important thing to point yeah i would out. be yeah a little bit more tighter on curation on this collection it's uh, already a very very strong collection it tells loud and clear that he knows exactly what he's doing when it comes to wildlife photography but those two images uh, the one with the cheetah and especially one with giraffe they are for me the weak links in the collection for me this is still fine you know because this this animal which is being shown i don't remember the name of it uh, but yeah i mean Hang it's not every day that you see this this is what mountain lion or uh, what is it called bobcat like i mountain. don't know yeah it's yeah. a mountain lion bobcat yeah, it's beautiful, beautiful you know for me i i agree to what he said which is the color grading compared to others but on a stand alone basis it looks terrific and it's quite something not something we see every day we see a lot of lions or a lot of tigers uh, in wildlife in nft space but this kind of creatures are quite rare you know that alone makes it quite unique so this could easily get away with that but that giraffe is one thing that really bothers me because it's very very easy shot and yeah. rock knowing his talent it should have been uh, curated a little bit more strongly on that part Yeah this one just I I love this shot too as a standalone but within the collection it feels a little bit blue to me. So I think if you yeah. you know if you look in areas that are white you could really find out like like the mouth um you can see like a really blue hole on the mouth. And so if you play around with some of the sliders and right blue saturation or um you know there's a slider at the bottom uh, this is these family photos. Um There's a there's sliders at the bottom down here, calibration and stuff that you can. I'm gonna freeze up my computer with this, so I'm not gonna get. <laughs> but but there's there's tons of temperature sliders where you could play around and and mute some of the blues or whatever whatever you want. There's so much you can do in Lightroom. But yep, a beautiful collection and obviously like a a really really strong landscape. I'm sorry, um, wildlife photographer. And so uh, a- answering like the other other questions. of the uh, of the artist that they had um saying that wildlife is it was niche to the, they be diversifying into you know other other um subsections such as like uh landscape and portrait and stuff like that i mean what's what's your answer on that uh, i suppose i didn't get the question sorry can you repeat it mike yeah sure i mean actually let me just let me grab the full on question here um there are different approaches by different art. oh no that's not it it's next to that um let's see wildlife okay here it is so wildlife is a bit 
uh, niche, not only in NFT, but also in physical markets, fine art, magazines, agencies, etc. as well. Finding the right people that would be interested in wildlife art seems tricky. Um, I have a significant TV, newspaper, and social media exposure due to my day job, and my current collectors turned out to be people that I knew that knew me before the NFT world. Although I'm known in my although I'm known with my wildlife work because I travel frequently, I spend a lot of time in the field. I have a diverse portfolio. Should I diversify in the NFT space? and present landscape, portrait, aerial as well, or should I keep it strictly wildlife? I mean, that's totally me, whatever is saying, because that's exactly who I am. I do drones, I do astro, I do portraits. I know I have released all of them. You know, my first was portraits, next was the wildlife, third was drone. Yeah. Then I, and then I went on with the wildlife for a bit with additions. So I think it's, for me, it's always about that. You know, I ask myself that, you know, I don't want to confuse anyone in this space, including the collectors. So I release one at a time. I just finish my wildlife, then move on and show something else uh, as a second layer of my photography. Once I finish that, I go to the next layer. I don't want to put all of them together, like uh, then, then be nowhere uh, in terms of impression as to what kind of photography you do. So I would rather work on this wildlife, make sure that it's gone, and then I'll go to the next step. Or there's always an addition which you can do and get away with that. You know? So if you want to introduce your drone, maybe you could do one addition. It creates enough noise around to tell everyone that along with the wildlife, you also do wonderful drone photography as an addition yeah. so that it's gone very quickly rather than having two one of ones sitting parallelly. Thank you, Savor. I think that's great advice. I mean, the artist had some good questions. Sorry, I'm going to look at a few of them. So let's look at... Uh... For my first NFT collection, I wanted to keep a bit general. Oh, we already talked about that that question there, and there was another question. Okay, so all, um, there are different approaches by different artists. Some say one collection addition at a time until each is sold out. Some say introduce as many collections as you can. I let people see all of your work. What's your take? So I think I think you just actually answered that, right? That your take is kind of rather than putting out all those different genres, um, maybe to focus on one at a time, right? Is that what you said, yeah, Sabod? But, so, but there's one more thing, you know, which he could do, which again, Burak, I've been following for him for a, for a while now, and all I've seen uh, him uh, doing in Twitter is wildlife photography. So for me, he's a hardcore wildlife photographer, but one thing he could do is start introducing others, no need to mint them, you know, just as a good morning post, you could put a drone and as a good morning post, you could put a landscape. You know, that's the advantage of the good mornings every single day. It is nothing but showing your different layers of photography. That's what I do every single day when I wake up. I'm like, okay, today I'll post wildlife, tomorrow I'll post drone, day after I'll post something else. So you keep on, you know, uh, introducing all those things without even minting. You're just giving an impression. Once that impression is set, you know, if he did that for all these months, I would know that, okay, bro. Practice wildlife, practice drone. But right now, since he didn't show us that layer of his photography, I only see him as a wildlife photographer. So I think there's no need to mint and introduce any work. You can rather introduce them as a Twitter post just to keep everyone warmed up. And at one point, you can just release maybe an edition of the other kind of photography and then take it slow from there. But I would still focus on this wildlife till it's sold. I would still stick to this because these are excellent images. I think that's perfect advice that like, you know, just using like the GM posts, uh, just to introduce like what you do that all the time and just that we don't have to mint everything and focus on like what we have minted, the storytelling behind it, and, like just introduce some new stuff in the space do talk spaces or just like, uh, you know, the GM posts are perfect. That's great. Great advice. And great questions. Really good questions. You don't only get you know, huge elaborate questions like that, but some really good ones there. So really cool. Um, if you're all set, I think we can move on to the next collection, Sibor. Yeah, sure, sure, please. Sure. Um, next collection is Anatolian Landscapes, and this is by uh, Ramiz uh, Ax uh, Axoy. And it says, um, in some points of Anatolia, in regions with 
high visual value, I present to your appreciation and evaluation a selection of photographs that I have chosen carefully. The season and location of light uh, in which I have taken with care and created over time. One of ones. So, um, you know, the artist statement is lacking for me. It's like a bit like it feels like I'm reading from a dictionary almost or like uh, it's very it's very like to the point like I present to you uh, your appreciation and evaluation a selection of my photographs. I mean, I, I would I want to hear like a little bit more on the artist statement, like, you know, uh, from you as an individual artist, like what is it about landscapes that brings you to, you know, want to set up and photograph these beautiful um beautiful landscapes and scale and and what that means to you i think there's some something something more personal in the artist statement rather than just telling me like what i'm looking at i'd rather not be told like what i'm looking at exactly because i could just look at the images um but a little bit of a you know more of a, a storyline uh, something to move my imagination about about you that's more personal so that would be my first uh, first thing banner looks looks you know Banner looks pretty professional with some of the landscapes that are in the collection. Um, so total volume is half of an ETH. Floor price is 0 0.1. And I have it listed by oldest. So um, so 0 0.1. Um, I would say, to be honest, 0 0.1. A lot of these sold. There's only two left. Really, really cheap. For, I think, this quality of work. I think the work is really, really well done. I think, you know, probably... My favorite image within here is probably Girl, Hill, and Herd. Um, though, you know, your titles are, once again, very direct, like your, uh, like your artist statement. Um, and I try to be a little bit more open-ended with the titling or a little bit more like, poetic in a sense, if you can, with the titling, rather than just telling us, you know, this is a girl, this is a hill, and this is a herd. Because I think your images are so much more than that. And, you know, the, those titles for me um, are just too simplified uh, and basic for something like this. I mean, this is just absolutely beautiful. I mean, if you just look at this from afar, you know, the, the, the geometry in the shape that's created by this, this herd of, of, of sheep, the two sheep herders, they're in a perfect positioning. This leads out to this just epic, you know, beautiful, multi-toned, uh, mountain region here um, and then in the background you have these other mountains and you even have uh, so many layers here right clouds sky and, and everything to that extent um, you know lots of uh, lots lots of beautiful landscapes in here this is this one's really hills hills and the milky way once again you're kind of just giving us the uh, you know giving us uh, exactly looking at a little direct for me really really beautifully uh, Really beautifully done on a long exposure here, waiting for the image to load. Hope and see, but it'll be worth the wait. Counting for me, but yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, beautiful, absolutely beautiful image here. Right? I don't know how you capture this light that's coming across the mountains there, uh, how you're lighting that up. Obviously, this is long exposure, Milky Way. I don't know if this is multiple exposures, but colors are really brilliant to me. Uh, the subject is the uh, is the Milky Way. Um, you know, looking at these uh, Sabod and some of the stuff I've said, how do you how do you feel about like how the collection is presented, the price point, um, you know, just what you're looking at here? Yeah, I mean, first of all, you mentioned a very important thing, which is uh, the Art of storytelling. Uh, there was a space moments back with the Meta Jingle and Sarah about storytelling. You know, that's such an important part of photography because not every collector reads, but anyway, you know, we are leaving a picture forever in blockchain. So why don't we leave it with a nice story? So because when you say Anatolia, for me, for a person like him who's in Turkey, it's very evident you know, Anatolia is here and there and this is the history, but we have no clue. So I think that's where we come in, you know, as artists to explain a little bit more about maybe a history or it could be anything, you know, you could figure out uh, hundreds of ways to tell a story. For instance, that Milky Way image, which you showed me, when I put my Milky Way image, which Alpha collected uh, my last drop, uh, one of one, 
there i went full on on the i didn't talk much about the landscape that was being presented because that's anyway visible i went with a long story about humans and how you know our ancestors looked at the stars and how carl sagan uh, said few things about the milky way you could go anywhere with your pictures you know take on a journey because we are living a permanent mark in blockchain so rather than just putting a few, one or two lines you could put a little bit more efforts on storytelling for the characters who wish to read you know that's our another way of contributing because they don't just um, buy a picture they also buy a story along with it if you do that as particular a bit of homework it could be anything you know for instance in another picture of mine i remember in my wildlife collection which again alpha collected he collected it only because of the story he even mentioned it when he collected that you know in that image there are a bunch of lioness and i told a story of how disney movies show the lion as the hero but in actual reality the lioness rule the pride you know they are the ones who keep everything together they are the real heroes of the pride and i wrote a story completely about that side of the uh, equation and that's what attracted a collector to that image otherwise maybe that image would be sitting now uh, without a collector who knows so i think that plays a very important role i think we need to give as many possibilities to a collector rather than say collectors don't read maybe there are collectors who will only read and buy so we can also cater to them by just doing their extra hard work and when it comes to the collection there are really some strong images like this one which is well framed uh, mm-hmm. i like the milky way one and there are a bunch of them but that fourth image for me which is i don't know whether it's sold or not it feels well, just, very easy you know yeah yeah when you look at other images and this one the x factor you know in the one of the images there were those sheep you know train of sheep which really was beautiful another one there's milky way other one has a framing those are all the x factors which is like adding one element extra to the image in this i don't know maybe in full screen there's something which i don't see but actually i don't see much no i agree with you um you know those other images they they feel like much more rare slices in time because those elements are kind of you know like this shot here yeah. is it's another one where you know i think people talk about patience right like i think the composition is beautiful and stuff here i could just just imagine that you know um someone was on this road you know like a like a like a vehicle was on this road a red vehicle or something yeah. some something was happening in these fields here right like there was something happening like a man with a tractor and he was uh, you know he was just plowing the fields or something where that an, another element i think could have been waited for you know so it's something i've been really learning lately you know when i find yeah, I mean, the location in street is that i i just yeah. i find a beautiful spot i'm like okay i'm going to wait you know i'm going to be patient rather than just moving on oh nothing's going on here time to go well something will develop like and you mentioned before you said it very beautifully like you you put the landscape and then now you, in front of you and now you can become the painter waiting for things to happen what do you want to paint in through patience yeah i mean for me photography is all about that you know a, a repeating value if i can go tomorrow and make this picture again for me that's not a picture which will stay for forever so in that this case i think if i go tomorrow to this particular spot i can take the very same shot another way could be just using a nd filter and make those skies blurry or in the one extra x factor to put your imprint is what makes image your image And with that said I think the ones that didn't sell are the ones that you're talking about that sort of have this is the other one otherwise everything else is sold um this is the other yeah. one that kind of lacked that element well well you know like still a beautiful landscape I think you know artist understands like layers uh, and stuff like that and this is opening up and giving it some time um but there's no I really don't know what the subject is here. You know, I could imagine that the subject is this mountain range cut in half by green and brown and it's very beautiful, but I just think that there's so much of the foreground where there's just not enough interest. Uh and it's it's too easy for this artist when they could create something like that herd of the herd of sheep with the with the um, you know, with the with the shepherds, right? When you could yeah, see something like that. Yeah, 100 things there. Yeah. foreground midground background you know what's the foreground what's the midground what's the background most often background is the sky and landscape midground is the mountains what is in the foreground you know that one element extra element is missing that can be found if nothing else human element you know your self portraits or your 
girlfriend or your friend whoever it is you know, just put them in the foreground and create that extra element in the foreground so that there's some kind of a depth to the image i think that's what's missing here and no it's kind of uh, you know like uh, these are the two images which are not sold it's not like it will not sell it may sell tomorrow but still you know as a photographer when you analyze that things come I and mean, fill in the blanks kind of thing absolutely and it looks like uh, you know some good properties in here um you know I, I i see a lot of properties lately but i don't see like the most important ones a lot of times which to me is like the addition um, like uh, if, how many additions is important to me and also like the artist name i think is important in the properties being like that that now, so I think they're being considered sort of like the EXIF data or metadata of, of like art on the blockchain. So I would, I would have to feel there's more important things in there. Otherwise, you know, descriptions, like we said, a lot of the description, just girl hill, you know, it's, um, you know, descriptions to me, like back to storytelling, you know, try to st tell a bit more of a story. Um, you know, Sabod made a great point about um, where he didn't, you know, he didn't talk about the image at all, the landscape, but he talked about um, like the Milky Way and how humans look at the sky and uh, how Carl Sagan talked about, you know, the, the universe and stuff like that. Like adding that element of story is a great idea. I um, just want to see real quickly uh, if uh, some questions within here. Uh, let's see. Anatolian landscapes, uh, questions. A uh, general evaluation of the last two pieces. We did give that, um, and then just I leave it to you was just another one there. Um, yeah, leave it to if, if leave it to me. Um, I mean, there's there's a couple of routes you can go here, right? You could um, you could replace these two images that uh, me and Simone talked about with images that do have that extra element and make this a, a stronger collection overall. Um, you know, you could um, you could unlist these and you know just burn them on uh, OpenSea and then just have a sold out um, a sold out collection on here. Um, and then and another know. thing could another thing could be there are two images. One image could be chosen for already there are five collectors in this collection. So do a raffle and whoever wins the raffle just send them an airdrop of the fifth uh, one of the images left and the last image which will be left after that. Could be used for an airdrop by releasing an addition. Make an addition, let's say 15 images or 20 images addition. And you can tell one of the person who collects the addition get one of one, which is sitting in this collection. So that's another way to move forward rather than just wait forever because we all have so much to show, but we are all stuck with that backlog. Absolutely. And so I'm just looking at the, uh, that, that's a great way to do it. Raffling. There's so many ways uh, to, to, to work around things here. Just looking at some of the other collections they have minted and what they've done. Interesting. <clears throat> I think these are not listed. You just uh, kept it up. So that yeah. You can list. Created March even, even that's kind of a nice idea to keep things uh, not listed. Just kept or open sea like a portfolio if somebody visits your open sea they get to see a whole range of images and if they want maybe they can talk to you in dm and say that image in that collection yeah. if they're not listed it's very interesting if you could yeah i don't i don't know if that's the case here though or if these were yeah you see i think i think a lot of these were listed you know the minted five minted five months ago um, They've been transferred to someone. Yeah, transferred. Uh, let's take a look at just transfers. Uh, let's get an idea of what people do. And it's transferred from Rex to. Oh, Not sure. Anyway, going a little off topic here. Um, cool, interesting. I think Sabot had a lot of great things to say about storytelling and the missing elements in that. Uh, but I think we can move on to the next collection, which is actually it's not a collection; it's an individual image. Um, this is Frozen World, and this is by uh, Madher uh, 
Nangia. And I definitely have seen this photograph in spaces, and I've talked about this photograph in a lot of spaces. You might have two similar. Um, yeah, take a look. I'm a yeah. collector also this as well. <laughs> yeah, I like it a lot. It's beautiful. Um, let's read the artist statement real quick. Um, the beauty of the unknown is something that intrigues me. The unexplored beauty of the frozen um, by Carl Lake is one such place that deeply fascinates me. This picture was taken in late February at sunrise somewhere in the middle of the frozen lake. The adventure of braving negative 20 degrees Celsius and the wind speed of 30 uh, kilomot uh, 30 uh, not I don't know if it's miles per hour or, or, or uh, not. Kilometers per hour. I'm sorry, kilometers per hour, yeah. I'm used to the miles per hour here. <laughs> to, uh, to take this picture uh, makes it one of the most challenging photographs that I've ever taken. First ray of sunshine hitting the rock, giving it a golden glow, and the methane bubble, although made of dead organic materials, are so captivating and a perfect subject for the photograph. So let's take a look at this large. Um, yeah, I've talked about the faces, obviously. It's... I mean, even if you were to just cut this image in half up at the top, it's still a beautiful image on its own. This is incredible here, what's happening. Uh, but the fact that we have this foreground also um, with these methane bubbles, something I'm not too familiar with, and they're, um, they're, they're dead, uh, dead particles, or, or, or what she's talking about here. It's really, really, um, really, really incredible to have that captured. So we have all foreground, middle ground, a, sort of a leading line coming off of the right side here into the landscape and this is just absolutely beautiful back here and there's a moon in the background and the moon and the moon right i'm just, just going to touch on that little moon there too just adds that little extra piece to the even further background uh in the sky so um so many layers so many elements beautiful colors um i enjoy it so i don't i know you're an owner of this suppose if you wanted to talk about this image yeah, I mean, what we discussed in the previous uh, section, which is foreground, midground, background, is exactly what is happening here. You know, without this bubble in the foreground, this image would fall short because the drama of that place is the lake and the dead animals below and all these uh, methane bubbles that come up. So all those, you know, story of the area is being put together in one image. And then there is the moon, then there is some kind of a, sunrise or sunset glow at the same time. So everything about this image, you know, when I collect, I think of all these things. You know, I, I ask myself all these questions and it works in every sense for me. Uh, and even the description and everything, it's all up to the mark because I'm interested in So yeah, I think there's no reason for this uh, image to be sitting. Unfortunately, it's been sitting for a while, I guess. I'm not so sure how many pieces are left. Uh, maybe um, eight pieces, they have, they have six, six pieces. pieces. They have six pieces. Yeah. So, and I think it will sell in mean, 0 0.025, mission of 15, that's 33 USD. Yeah, you know, I just think it's, you know, it's a harder of a market right now. It's very soft and very slow. So I think they'll definitely yeah. sell. So, but when it comes to properties, you know, I think uh, I remember one of the collectors saying in one of these spaces, he is very, very particular about uh, these things. Uh, he was talking about properties, and one of the things that he wishes to see is uh, the category of photography. In this case, landscapes, for example. Just that keyword of landscape, they, according to him, there will be, you know, in the upcoming days, there will be apps which will help a collector sort his collections. You know, if he wants to see only landscape, suppose he has an exhibition of landscape photography, he can just go to properties and filter landscape photography and see all the landscape that he has collected. If everyone does this, it would be so easy for them, you know. Otherwise, suppose he does the filter, this image will not show up because there's no category of photography. So even artist name, I think, is uh, as you rightly said. But I think the category of photography plays a very important role in filtering. I think I have to add this then to my. Um, <laughs> I have to add this <laughs> yeah. to to my own uh, uh, collection then through Manifold. But I don't know if my collection is. Just uh, put in streets, you know. It's alone enough to filter it off. Street photography, uh, let's say I don't know if it's documentary or street, so I'm gonna probably just put street. But that's a good point. I didn't think about that. Uh, the category of photography within there when it's when their things are searchable, so yeah, it's a yeah. great idea. Let me see if um, any questions on this on frozen on um, frozen world. 
close the world. Here we go. Um, opinion, why is it not? Um, you know, that that's, could be a few different things, right? You know, it's a slow market, but also, um, you know, how many times have you told the story of it? I, I, I know she's told the story of it in spaces multiple times. Um, probably has it uh, on, tw on Twitter and stuff too, telling the story of the image. I just think it's, I think it's a harder market right now. I think Tezos has something to do with it too, um, where people are listing for even cheaper on Tezos. Uh, I think they I think it will sell out. Any suggestions on promoting this collection? Um, I mean, I think you're doing a good job right now. Like you're you've you've you're in the AMA. Right? We're talking about it. There's more eyes on it. Uh, I've seen it in several spaces. Um, so yeah, I know. You know, I mean, Twitter posts with the story of the image, and um, you know, have, having your friends help you out with some retweets and getting eyes on it. I don't I don't know outside of that, Sabote, if you have anything, but I think she's been doing a pretty good job at yeah. uh, getting getting this in the eyes of at, people. When you look at the when you look at the number of likes on this open tree itself, it's almost 700 likes. That means a lot of people have visited this particular image. You know, it's not like it's been away and no one has seen it. So she's been there actively promoting it and all that. So sometimes I think, yes, you know, it's hard to understand exactly why it doesn't move. Uh, I think this is one of those images for me. The six images should have been sold out. Uh, but I think there was a small distraction. I know Madhur is in the room. The distraction was Tezos. You know, it went on. She also knows, you know, whole day, whole night, it became about Tezos selling pictures called 0 0.5 Tezos and all that. Between all that, this image got a little bit subdued, you know, because every day it was just that same Tezos image. When that happens, sometimes some images take a back seat and maybe that traction was lost. I'm just guessing because I observe things and even I told her about that. I think that was one of the reasons it got a bit slow. But it can be picked up, you know, like one of the ways to do that is what Mike does, you know, which I truly adore, which is the poster work that Mike creates, like a movie poster. You could refresh the whole image, make a proper hardcore movie poster out of this and make it exciting. You know, when someone sees it should look like they should stop and look at it. You know, that's what happens with Mike's posters. I just, I even have it saved it on my phone because I keep it as a benchmark. Like when I do my next, I'll prepare a poster like this, you know, creating that excitement. Maybe you could rekindle that with the new post of work. And that's all we can do. Apart from that, there's nothing much to be done. I think it's a beautiful image, six to go. It's uh, easily possible to push it across. Yeah, that's a great, that's a great feedback and great advice. And, you know, I don't, I don't specifically do that poster work myself. So it's uh, Anna Julia Gobbs. She's a great graphic designer. And I seen her do that for one of her collections. And I was just like, oh, I want this for my collection. So reached out to her and said, you know, hey, would you, would you be interested in, you know, making a poster, a movie like poster like this for my collection that's coming out? And, you know, I would be sure to, um, you know, put your name all over it. And then uh, it also sent her, um, you know, a free edition from the collection. So, yeah, you can always, um, it's always a good idea to, to network with people in the space that, you know, have, have talent, talents that, you know, you don't exactly possess. Um, you know, because uh, you know, we all we all have our own strengths and weaknesses. So having having people in the space that can fill the gaps of my weaknesses, like stuff like that, uh, has been really big for me. So yeah, I think I think this with a proper like beautiful looking like frozen world, functioning like you have so much space in this image where there could be writing, like a lot of the mid ground here where where it could be written and and. Something could look really beautiful, and then down here it could be like, you know, only on open sea or something, and you know, uh, it, it could it could do a lot. I think that can do a lot actually. So that's a great idea. Um, yeah. yeah, but out, outside of and that, I think it's a one beautiful more thing image. That could be, yeah, yeah. One more thing that could be done is some behind the scene of uh, she went all the way to this remote corner in the world. Uh, only thing I have seen from this place is this image. You know, I'm sure she has much, much more. Maybe there are videos on her phone. You can put it in apps. Nowadays, it's very easy to chop and make a video out of it. Create some new video and show the behind the scene, how it looks uh, in that particular corner of the world. And again, along with that video, put the link of OpenSea and say, if you want to buy this picture, if you feel this place right now in the video, here is the link, you know, just go and uh, have a look at it at just 0.025. I think that extra uh, push is required, you know, because six pieces, it should be going. And I think the only way to do that is to tell 
more and more stories apart from showing the same picture again something else from that place you know it could be even a selfie it could be a video it could be another image from this place along with this image you can post two images at the same time put continue to put that link and say another six to go perfect yeah i love it i love all the feedback i think that's great um ways when things slow down how to amp amp them up and it's all it's all really storytelling or just like um you know, making, like you said, making a beautiful poster image and just getting people like, oh, wow, what is this? You know, is this something I'm missing out on? Let me check this out because it's a gorgeous image. So, yeah, with that yeah, being I said, mean, I think you can, that's great. If I was in this place, I would even Google up and see what else has happened in uh, a Lake uh, Baikal, I think it's called. Uh, she spoke in when she tells the story of this image. She talks about uh, some supercar being shot in this place, you know, a supercar showed up in this frozen lake ferrari or whatever and they're wow. making an ad you know you can even dig in take a screenshot of the ad put a link to the video to generate interest in that particular ad and how it looks in that video and meanwhile continue to promote you know this is the image from that place here is the link for open sea there are many ways maybe there's a movie shot here very famous movie you could utilize that and tell some behind the scenes i think that generating interest in that way perfectly said i think some great advice thank you so much to both and um, I think with that we'll move on to the next collection, which is Wild Angels Editions. Uh, and this is by uh, Ratnadvit uh, Saha. So I'll read the artist statement here. Wildlife um, may be uh, a rainforest or grassland is magical. Observing wild animals in their natural habitat is no less than magic. Presenting Wild Angels Editions a collection that'll continue incorporating my wildlife edition photographs. Uh, my very first trip to uh, Mas Masimara, Kenya, our camp was set at the middle of the vast plains of the savannah. Our day there used to start at 5.30 a.m. And as I said, our camp was set in the middle of the wilderness. Once we are out on our safari cars, we could see hundreds of zebras, impalas, wildebeests, topis, uh, black bucks, giraffes, hippos, hyenas, and whatnot. With every minute, as the uh, eastern sky glows up, the animals look more gorgeous under that wonderful sky. When the first light falls on the lions, cheetahs, leopards, zebras, oof, no one can take, no one can actually express the feeling in words. Their appearance, sounds, rising sun, cool breeze, everything makes the environment so magical, so blissful, making the animals look like wild angels. So with that artist statement, I'm sure you can relate to a lot of that, Sabood. I mean, lighting conditions does so much different, like light tells the story in a lot of, uh, in a lot of, uh, of the wildlife photos, I'm sure, right? Because it, you, it, it just, as the light changes, it just, everything, the colors change, the mood changes, and just it does so much. So, how how can you yeah. talk a little bit about how light plays um, within you know this 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 type of photography? Yeah, I mean, in Masai Mara, I think uh, you may see the best sunset anywhere in the world, but nothing comes close to what happens in Masai Mara because every day sunset and sunrise is literally. Uh, it's as red as blood, you know, the, the sky goes crazy. And I've never seen anything more uh, crazier than Mazai Mara sky. And I, no wonder Ratna is speaking so much about it. And it's an overall uh, introduction to the collection, you know, because he's adding more and more wildlife images there. So that's why I know he didn't specifically go with this image description because this image has its own description, its editions. Uh, so I think that's very well done. You know, when you're reading it out, I could feel what you're what you're trying to say because he was with me, you know, even when taking this image, we were next to each other and we were, it was a very lucky day because cheetah hunt is something we all dream of, but we don't get to see often because it happens so fast. Uh, you don't even get time to react. But in this case, our driver was a very smart guy and he parked the car in such a good, uh, perfect spot that the cheetah came miles away running and chasing this particular uh, little, small little cub of some animal. And it, the hunt happened right in front of us. You know, we didn't have to do anything. It was like made for us, literally. Tyler made for us. We are the only ones 
in the whole area to get that shot. The rest of them are still chasing the cheetah in their cars, and we are wow. sitting there and shooting. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what's crazy? All the all I noticed that these are all flies on the face flies, of yeah. it. Yeah, I thought it was like um, spots. Then I looked up close. I noticed it was all flies because it's you know it's dead obviously. Um, and this just gaze with these tangerine eyes. Um, wow, their eyes are uh, are very orange, huh? Yeah, I mean that's what I like about this uh, image. The title he he chose tangerine because he could have said cheetah hunt or he could have said wildlife or whatever. But that's the thing, you know. Don't you don't have to be always straightforward with your storytelling. You can take it in another another direction. Here you went with that eyes because that's what is the most uh, you know like really attractive part of this image, which is the eyes of a devil. So yeah, it's uh, absolute beauty and perfect title. I love it. Yeah, I, lo I love the title too. Like you said, open ended, make you think. Uh, let's read the description. Exactly. Um, can predators be uh, predated? Uh, yeah, I mean, unfortunately, this predator is predated so much, uh, not only by other lions and hyenas and leopards and whatnot, it's even predated by humans. So cheetahs are going fast, you know, like less than 7,000 is left in the wild. So that's the very, very sad part of it you know it's not a predator it's actually a victim of everyone in the savanna including humans but right now yeah the efforts are on hopefully even india recently if you don't know recently india india had ten thousand cheetahs back in 1600s and we took it to zero because of all the hunting unfortunately so now india has reintroduced cheetahs they bought some 10 cheetahs from africa they're bringing more and they're re reintroducing them in the forests of india because it's a natural habitat, you know, it's the same species. So hopefully India will contribute in saving this species again. But all that aside, you know, what I like about this image is the lighting conditions. You know, the cheetah is the king in this situation because the other one is dead. So the light is on the king and the other animal which is dead is in the shadows. It has its own way of, uh, you know, if you look at it, it has its own story. It's beautiful. So reading off of that, you know, a question that arose in my mind long ago. Uh, was mystically solved on my visit uh, to Masamara this year. I'll let Tangerine answer that for you. Uh, Solanji, a cheetah named uh, by local uh, uh, Maasai tribes is a she-cat. Uh, she was the mother of two cubs when I first saw her. On my first encounter, the sight I evidenced was eye-opening. She just hunted a deer and was eating it uh, with the cubs when a hyena snatched their hunt and took it away, leaving them hungry and, and foodless for the entire day. Um, she left the place to save her cubs. It was almost heartbreaking to see those babies remain hungry. In the wild, cheetahs are actually the most innocent big cat, if we may say. They're easily, easily uh, uh, predated, if that's how you say that, um, predated, over by other predators. And most of the time, they helplessly give up due to their lack of power or unity. So they don't have unity as a tribe either. Well, however, two days later, we found her hunting um, this baby com uh, common ele land. Uh, it was not more than three, three fourths of hours old um, and didn't even learn to run from predators. This was another eye-opening situation. I felt extremely sad uh, at the LN's demise, uh, but then I realized that nature has uh, its own way. The powerful will always hunt the less powerful. Two days ago, I felt bad for the cubs, and now I was feeling bad for the LN. Um, we sympathize with the less powerful, of course, uh, but this is also the truth that this LN actually saved the three lives of the cheetah family uh, who were possibly starving for the last two days uh, after they lost their hunt to the hyena. And that's why tangerine. Tangerine is a shade of orange, but not orange. It has a sour taste, uh, but not too sour as well. It is as if a paradox in nature, an undefined uh, intermediate, just like our cheetahs here. Also, uh, incidentally, uh, uh, Selangji's eyes 
were a tangerine as well, somehow reminding me that she is also a paradox and that she is trying her best to protect her babies and being a perfectly great mom to them. But at the end, this experience taught me something. In Africa, they say, if you want to run fast, run alone. But if you want to run far, run together. Perhaps the fate of the predator cheetahs, cheetahs being uh, predated over by another teaches us that um, how it's over, uh, yeah, how it's over powerful, how, how, however, sorry, it should be however, and however powerful we may be, uh, running solo uh, will always be uh, disadvantageous. Wow. Uh, really, really, really well done on this statement. Um, beautiful artist statement. Um, great properties and everything there too. Um, yeah, these are wonderful. So there are additions of um, 16 at um, 0 0.05. Um, doesn't look, like, are they not, are they not listed? Uh, they're not, they're not listed. Right. Uh, it's on a pre-sale actually. I think it's coming out tomorrow. Okay, that's great to know. Um, it looks like a couple of them are sold for 0 0.025, 0 0.025. Um, and I have to read more into the, to the, um, to the pre-sale and such, but yeah, these are, these are beautiful. I see this, uh, I see this selling out. Um, it's a great price and, um, also a, a limited, uh, number at 16. So yeah. I don't have, that's I don't have anything else to say about this. This is but it's, it's just really really incredible work and the artist statement's beautiful. So, yeah, I think this is uh, again a crash course in how to write a story because that what you read of the cheetah it was so perfect. Again, it's about taking that color and then matching it and connecting it to the image in its own way. You know, going all the way around to tell the story, which is not obvious. You know, it's a artist how he feels rather than what you see. I think that's the most important part. Ratna always does that. He's very good at storytelling. Absolutely. And the multiple meanings behind Tangerine, right? He had multiple meanings behind Tangerine. Um, so not, not only was Tangerine a powerful title to me because it was open-ended, but um, there was multiple meanings within that title, uh, which, which was described. So uh, really beautiful. I want to see, um, see if you had any specific... Uh, specific questions on tangerine oh, rip, here we go oh no that was not ah oh, wild i'm sorry it's wild angels that's why i was having a hard time uh, hard time seeing it yeah wild angels editions um any comments or suggestions about the picture edition size already talking about that um, how to approach buyers as I'm uh, going through very poor traction Twitter. Um, yeah, I mean, I you know, it's we talked about a, a couple of things before. You can make an you can make like um, one of those movie type posters, um, which is really interesting if you know someone who's good at graphic design, you know, storytelling, which you're you're doing really well, speaking in uh, spaces, etc. You can even DM collectors if you have the right intentions and uh, telling them what it's about and explaining the story is always is always good. Any other suggestions would be appreciated. I don't have anything else. Do you have anything else, um, uh, Simone? Yeah, I think you said a very important thing at the end, which is DM your collectors. You know, whoever has connected you so far, you know, it's like your right to go to the DM and inform them of your drop. You know, that's very very important. So I think that's what you need to do. Uh, apart from that. You know, have patience. You know, that's one thing I see all the time. Twitter, traction, etc. It's out of our control. What's in your control is your image and the spaces that you can attend and where you can share. You know, whatever is in your control, control that. Twitter traction is not our problem. We can't help it. Yeah, exactly. Work on what you what you have control of. Yeah, DMing collect is fine. Just do it right, you know, with the story and intention. Good. With that, um, jump over to the next collection, which is um, uh, which is Knights of Wonder. That's by uh, Akshay uh, Upadhyay. Knights of Wonder. This is a collection on fabrication. Uh, there's four in the collection. Uh, this is zero point two zero e description. 
All right. So um, uh, imagination will often carry us to worlds uh, that that never were. But without it, we go nowhere. I'll say again. Do you look up at night and wish to swim in a sea of stars? Do you imagine if the stars appeared once in many years? How you would adore and preserve the city of God? Do you believe in magic? Knights of Wonder is an ongoing collection that presents the otherworldly uh, beauty above our heads, slices of time in the ever-dazzling night sky unveiled across spectacular landscapes of the earth. I like these questions a lot, actually. Um, you look up at night and wish to swim in a sea of stars, right? Do you imagine if the stars appeared? That's a good question I've never thought about. Do you imagine if the stars appeared once in many years? Imagine if they did, we'd all be staring up at the stars, but because they're there every night, we don't. <laughs> exactly. Wow. I mean, I love the description. It's beautifully done. And starting with Carl Sagan, you can't go wrong. It's just perfect. Beautiful. Beautifully done. Cool. So let's take a look. So there's there's four images in here. Make a Wish, a Starry Night, Stardust, and a Celestial River. And so we'll open up with the first one, Make a Wish. Let's see if there's another statement here. Um, dwell on the beauty of life. Watch the stars. See yourself running with them. Uh, it was the time of uh, Perseids. Prompt you plan a meteor shower. Oh wow, me it's a meteor shower. Yeah, Impromptu. Yeah. Wow, impromptu plan. We headed out to catch the meteor showers happening that night. Weather was unsupported for the most part, but uh, we drove uh, 300 kilometers. Uh, in search of a dark sky away from the city lights, hoping the clouds don't play play a, a spoil sport. <laughs> we spot a, a potential vantage point atop a hill and hike towards it, waiting in the cold, constantly looking up, anticipating with excitement. The sky clears up at 4 a.m. in the morning, and whoop, a streak of light zips past over the head. A night to remember in pursuit of shooting stars. Once again, the, the descriptions are just wonderful. Excellent. Yeah, right. Wonderful description from. I'm sorry, from Ash. I'm sorry, from uh, from Ash K. Really beautiful. Um, and the image, the image is gorgeous in itself. I love you see this little like shooting star here or meteor, whatever this is. But when you come down to the subject, and you can see the subject is wearing a, a head a headpiece with a flashlight. Um, you can just see that flashlight coming up and then almost like it's uh, blowing a flute or something and a meteor is coming out the mouth. Pretty interesting. Oops. Next image. Um, Starry Night. Beautiful shot. I love. I love. However, you lit. It looks like maybe you used a car with the headlights to light those flowers up in the front, um, because otherwise, I think we would see more lit flowers out here into the distance. So, I think that's really well done. And then it goes into the well, the layers of mid down and foreground and background here. Uh, do you suit Astro Sabone? Maybe you have. Um, have uh, more idea on, on how to speak about some of these uh, images. Maybe not. Um, anyway, I, beautiful image. I, I really not love. I love the, the colors, the yellow colors in the front. These are all buy now for zero point three five. The reserve is zero point two, so I think the price point is really good. I think it's September 8th, so not too long ago. This one, this one appeals to me. I really, I really love the uh, the foreground of this one. Yeah, with the tent. It looks like there's just like leaves around the tent. You can't even tell. I'm just, you know, it just seems so naturally lit. That you didn't even use an outside source to light this. I don't know how this is done, but a beautiful foreground that leads. I love this image being very just kind of minimalistic and 
like the color tones between the blues and orange and browns, just gorgeous. So I think this is one of my favorite ones in the set, actually. And then the, uh, the Celestial Rear. Another beautiful shot. Something I notice in this is that it's very sharp in the, uh, in the Milky Way. And we sort of lose that sharpness in the mountains. And I know photographers that do astral, they merge images. So they take one of the foreground, one of the midground, and then one of the Milky Way. And they merge them all together so they could have that. I mean, I don't, I don't necessarily feel that this has to have a focus image. I don't mind that um, it has a bit of uh, focus that's sort of, you know, out of focus or a lack of sharpness here with this beautiful image. So, Bo, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> I'm just uh, lost in the pictures because they're so beautiful. Each one is so perfect in terms of composition, in terms of story. I mean, even the pricing, you know, it's just about right, 0 0.35. And the fourth image, uh, which is that one with the vertical Milky Way, uh, the Celestial River. This yeah. image, you know, we're talking about uh, foreground and Milky Way being sharp. It reminded me of the very famous image from Van, how do you say his name? Van Gogh. Uh, he has that image, Starry Night. Uh, yeah. If you look at that image carefully, uh, the uh, real hero of the image is the sky, you know, it's the stars and it's the moon in the sky and all that. That's the real hero if you look at the history of that image. And the foreground was just foreground, you know. He just said foreground has to be there so it's going to be some trees and it's going to be a church and whatever. But for him, the hero of the picture was the night sky, you know. It was one of those really important images where background became the hero. So I, it reminds me of the same thing, you know. Here, the background is the hero because the whole idea was to showcase the cosmos and he it's so perfectly done. I mean, I love this image. And also about how to edit Milky Way, I think. It's perfect. Not only this one, uh, the even the other one before this, that Milky Way is so perfect. You know, the colors and the density. Because usually there's a lot of types of Milky Ways you see from photographers because only those who really understand what Milky Way is, they will be able to pull it out perfectly. And this Milky Way, what you see here, is just absolutely perfect. You know, this is how it should look. It should not be cut out from the night sky. It should be merging with the night sky because it's part of uh, the cosmos. It's not a standalone Milky Way. So I think that is very well done here. And it almost reminds me of Cat, uh, Cat's image, the Trillion Star Hotel. So, yeah. I mean, all the images. Cat, Cat Samar. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this, this one happens to be my favorite one. I think, it's the, I think it's the contrast of the color between the orange and the blues and just how the, the mountains fade into the sky, this beautiful Milky Way sky. It's a gorgeous image. Uh, it reminded I mean, me really, immediately of Cap. <laughs> if really NFT knew how to appreciate uh, the hardworking artist, this image should not be sitting here, you know, because it's Himalayas. The cold in Himalayas is next level. You know, you may think Iceland is cold, but Himalayan cold is like it goes to your bone. So I'm sure these images were very, very hard. It looks very pleasing right now, but it's very, very hard to shoot. I've been there a million times and every single time it's the cold which kills you and to be patient for milky way at night and to compose between all of that that's what makes it so extraordinary yeah beautiful i mean this one yeah field of gold it looks like gold is shining in the foreground yeah it looks like it's lit with the car headlights or flash i think it's the valley of uh valley of flowers you know there's a place in india where it the himalayan area where the there's like billion uh, flowers which come up in during one particular season during the year. I think maybe it's during that time. It's gorgeous. Yeah, because usually cool. one of the main problems with Milky Way is Milky Way is actually very easy to shoot. Anyone can shoot Milky Way. You know, you just point your camera 25 seconds and ISO 6400 and whatever and boom, you're done. It's very, very easy. What's hard at night is to compose. You know, remember that there's still something in your foreground there is still something in your mid-ground. So making sure in that dark to find all those elements, it's very, very hard. It takes a lot of efforts. And whenever I see such images with perfectly composed night scenes, it means the photographer really knows his game and he has really, really worked this ass off because in minus 20, it's not easy. Yeah, absolutely not. Uh, 
gorgeous, gorgeous images. It's like crazy how much hard work goes into this. But yeah, I love I love the descriptions too. Like we talked about the descriptions are. So yeah, the pricing, the the, the quality, everything is really there. So um, let's take a look at um, Cash Case Twitter. Let's see. Um, she's got these up: Himalayan Gold, Knights of Wonder. And he's he's posting about the work, so. Be interesting if you added a bit of a story in there instead of just the image at the end, maybe like what it was like to be on that code. Yeah, never, never miss a chance to put that link. You know, there's a chance here. Good night. Here is my picture at on foundation. Just one more link right there in the caption. The yeah, more we push sure. that link, more better it is. I agree. Really tricky. Really beautiful. See, okay, specific to that. Knights of Wonder. Okay, so um, I plan to have this collection as a progressive drop in phase one. There are four. Uh, I would add furthermore as the sales pick up. Uh, do you think this approach works? Yeah, I think that approach is better than like listing, you know, like 20 at a time. Like you have four great ones there see how that goes um, and then go from there. I think that's, that's a good plan. Um, is, is the collection cohesive enough? Yes. Yeah, incredibly cohesive. Right? So it's a passion photography and uh, landscape. Any suggestions on promoting this collection? Um, do you have any suggestions on how to promote the collection? You know, I mean, it may be like a, a, a drop or something like that could be cool or just like a, highlighting like maybe a highlight thread of, of like what it's about and what it's like to um you know with a friend that's you know hosting it what it, what it's like to shoot in those conditions and what astrophotography is like i think that could bring a lot of light to it um do you have any other yeah. ideas yeah. yeah that definitely you know first of all tell the story because i told about the temperature about the hard work to compose i'm sure you know before each of those images he had compositions which failed and then finally it becomes a success. Post those, uh, those what you call them in the old days, contact sheet of your images and you know, show the progress of your uh, getting to this composition. Other one could be a before after because your Milky Way editing is perfect. Maybe a before after could be great. Or maybe if you even have a uh, like a time lapse of Photoshop as you edit, you know, that could be another video which uh, helps people see like how it how it was and how it became. So that's something you could do, screen record and edit the picture again if you want to. It doesn't have to be absolutely same. You can just do uh, get to almost close to how it looks right now and do that time lapse and record it in your computer and put it up in the storytelling. You know, these images is you have to make people care. You know, otherwise, people would think just another JPEG. You know, that's where you come in. You have to tell the story and why it's so hard and why it's so valuable. Behind the yeah. scene, contact sheet and uh, before after. I think I think a poster on one of these could be really cool too. If you're talking like yeah. graphic design, like something simple like this, could have, you know, some some simple text in the middle here, and then like you know yeah. only on like available on foundation, boom, and then a story about it. So no way I could grab yeah. this. Yeah, all those things. Yeah. Cool. Um, we'll, we'll move on then to to the next collection. Do you have something else? No, no, that's about things. Cool. Uh, next collection. Uh, well, it's just a single image. Uh, it's called uh, Chat uh, Puja, uh, and this is Chat by Puja, uh, Puja. Puja. Yeah, and this is by uh, Bihib Puja, um, and this is by uh, B Pradev uh, Roy. And so, um, I I went and I saw that it's in a collection called Adams Adams Ale. Um, so let's just read the read the description on that first. So, uh, water, uh, the very necessity of life. Uh, some lose their breath under it, and some find theirs. It simultaneously, simultaneously, simultaneously cools the hot earth, irritates the busy ones, uh, and blends with the grief of the heart broken when it falls from heaven. The same water, uh, when on a vast sea, troubles the crude 
carefree sailor. When the same water is mixed uh, with the river, it, it's, it summons its devotees. In a true sense, water is formless. It takes its form from its surroundings. That's really well written. Sounds like poetry. Brilliant. Right? Amazing. Really well written. And there's one NFT in here. Um, and this is that uh, cat, uh, Pooja, right? Pooja. Yeah. I got it right now. And yeah. let's, read, let's read the artist statement on this description. Photograph was taken during uh, her Chat Puja, an Indian festival where devotees worship uh, Chati goddess and son for supporting life on earth and to seek the blessing of the divine. As the ritual goes, women of all ages take a holy dip in a river, Ganja, Ganga, followed Ganga. by yeah. yeah Ganga, followed by uh, Surya uh, Pujan, uh, sun worship, half merged in water. This mid-aged lady was one of them. With pristine devotion, she was following the ritual during high tides when the water current were quite strong. She stood there fierce, fearlessly like it was a piece of cake, but trust me when I say this, when I tried to go into the river, I couldn't even walk straight. The water current was pulling me in its direction. I was surprised and shocked at the same time, looking at the woman right in front of me, looking so timid yet so rigid in her place. I came to realize that muscle power is so trifling when compared to the willpower of one's mind. Once again, really, really excellent writing. Um, really, really beautiful writing. Mm -hmm. Artist, right? So let's take a look at but, the image. Um, I don't know whether in foundation, I, I never use foundation. So uh, license and etc. are not required in foundation. We don't put it in the description. That's a good point. Um, there is no license written in here. Um, so that, you know, then it, no, it, it's the same practice. We should still put a license, our licensing yeah. information in here, right? There's tags. I think there's even, well, I think when it's done through Manifold, you could even have properties on, um, on foundation. Now. So that's something to consider, but I would definitely put in that licensing there as well. So let's take a look at the, uh, the, uh, the pricing is 0 0.68. Um, but uh, why only a bid? You know, it could also be buy now at a different price, right? I think that's the common practice again. I don't know. I'm just guessing because I don't use foundation. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe the artist thinks that they should get more than zero point six eight, and so maybe a bid would open up different, more eyes to it. I'm not sure. Because the there are some collectors I talk yeah. to, they don't like bidding. You know, they want to buy now. So if it's bid, they don't even look at it. Maybe both often could be given. That's true. Uh, there's some are there's some collectors that will that don't even do bids because they don't want to they don't want to deal with it. They just want the image. That's it. Yeah, would be a good idea just to have that. So, um, you know, the first thing when I looked at the image from afar, um, I thought that she was holding a cell phone, uh, and I was like, I hope that's not a cell phone. <laughs> and I realized I realized that it's not. Um, and, you know, though it's not, I don't know if it's a, a twig or whatever it is. No, it's an incense, incense stick. Incense stick. Oh, it's an incense it's stick. It's like an incense stick. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So then that makes sense. I love her gaze, how she's looking out. Um, you know, the, the, the depth of field where, you know, just this little portion of the water is in focus and she's in focus here. I think the one thing for me is I, I don't know fully if the, this composition lends to um, the emotion of the image. I feel like you have to get in really close to see her face, right? Which I think is really important in this shot, at least for me. Um, I'm trying to zoom in here. I can't zoom in any, in any more than this. But her facial expression is just really beautiful. And um, I don't know if if, the, if 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 this image is strong, if it's you know, if it's cropped in a way where, you know, it's about it's about this here, or if if it, if it needs that 
you know, it needs that, that, you know, that the bridge and the bridge and stuff like that too. But I feel like it's, it's a bit, it gets a bit lost in such a large, um, in such a large frame for me. And I, and I love the description and I love what it's about, but I don't know if you feel similar to Sabota or if you, if, um, you know. Yeah. I mean, I tried to zoom in because I could zoom it on my phone to see how it looks uh, without uh, the stuff on the top with the bridge, you know, but I can, if you look at uh, the uh, overall value, I mean, geographical value of this image, because it's a bigger story, because this happens in Kolkata, which is a city in India, and that bridge in the background is like an iconic bridge, and it's like, it's like the symbol of Kolkata. I think when you look at it that way, it adds a nice value, you know, uh, for those who know the geography, that bridge adds a lot of value because without even telling mm -hmm. where it was taken, we know where it is. Uh, and also it kind of, uh, you know, like she is in such a beautiful red, so feminine. And the background is, uh, the bridge is very, very masculine. You know, it looks very, very tough. So that also creates a nice contrast in my opinion. And it breaks the image into two halves, 50-50 almost. And the one half, which could be a plain sky, is now filled with a bunch of patterns. For me, all those things are, uh, in my personal opinion, good compositional elements. You know, one thing I miss in this image is that incense stick in her hand. They burn it, you know, so it's going to create some smoke. Yeah. I would wait for a moment when the smoke is flying in the air. That would be the X factor there. Well, I think that could bring the image to such a such a great, great image if it had that that element smoke. of uh, that yeah. smoke, adding that atmosphere yeah. and telling the story of it. Because to me, I. I'm I'm looking at it from an outside perspective because I don't I don't yeah. know this place. So to me, it can look like um, a twig, or it can look like um, you know what's the um, what those. Now now that you said now that you said cell phone, I can't look beyond cell phone. It looks like a cell phone to me now. Oh my mobile. gosh! Yeah, no, from from far yeah. away, it looked like mobile phone in the water to me. So. Yeah, so that's why that's why I guess that's why I wanted to get close up to the image. But it makes sense to me that if that's an iconic bridge uh, that has to do with the story, then this is very well composed. And I like how you brought up the contrast between the bridge being masculine and having this tough structure among this among this woman um, who is. I mean, who's, who's... Yeah, uh, you know, like even if you look at the color tone, it's warm and cool. You know, she's very warm with the red, and the whole picture is cool. So even that works. For me, the only X factor, you know, I would, if I was shooting this, I would 100% make sure that there's smoke in the instant stick, you know, without that, I would not even let that picture happen, you know, even if I had to go and give her a mass stick to burn it, so I would do that, you know, if I had to go that far. So that would be the X factor for me. Uh, apart yeah. from that, love the image. Yeah, I agree completely. So let's see if they had a question on this um, specific. Um, I have chose I have chosen the name as the festival name. Um, is it okay? Okay. Um, and then the other is is it a worthy photo? Yeah, it's definitely a worthy photo. The name. Um, yeah, I don't. Yeah, I mean maybe your your answer is better than mine because you you have you understand what this festival is and and if this name relates also. Um, to the to this photo, or you think this photo could be named in a different way? Suppose I mean, yeah, it's straightforward. I know it's like saying Christmas. Uh, that's about it. Uh, but you know, for the given the audience of the world, maybe a easier one could be better. You know, instead of saying Chet Puja, which we understand as Indians, but outside uh, they may not even know what it means. You know, so giving a bit of clue, not even if not direct, you know, indirect about what it is you know there could be a second tagline to it after check puja there could be one more english title which could add some extra divinity or whatever it could be you know just to give that extra touch to the english audience yeah i mean i i was okay with the title but that's because i you know i went in and i read the whole the artist's the description which is really well written but you know i guess not everyone you know you can't expect i guess everyone to do that but I'm okay with yeah. the description. I'm totally okay with it because I know I know the story, but I love the red. I love the red on blue tones and, and love the red. What you wrote about how she's this timid, uh, the uh, timid looking woman, but it stood uh, so well and you know and, and, and was so rigid, and that you know that yeah, uh, I mean, uh, the power of the mind 
over over the power of strength. You know, it was really hit, yeah. hit home. Now that I look at this, I'm still thinking, Nico, because I've been to this particular spot, so I know exactly the situation here. So I've been thinking in my head, if I was there, what else I would do to make this picture even more better? One more thing I could do or he could do, which is totally cool, you know, we are not documentary photographers. At the end of the day, it's reality, uh, which is happening in print, and we can play around with it. Uh, there's a flower market right next to it, attached to it. You could take some flowers and throw it in the river and it floats around. It's anyway done by Hindus during the prayers. That would add some more, you know, foreground color, you know, like where she's standing. If, you, if she was covered by a bunch of uh, flower petals, it would be gold. Yeah. Adding an extra element in the water, yeah. yeah. Like just, like, just like that element of smoke would add that extra element. Mm -hmm. yeah. But otherwise, a beautiful image. Yeah. yeah. We have... Um... We just have two collections left. I mean, one is a collection and the other is a, um, is a is an addition. It's actually from the same artist. They submitted the same thing. And since the second one is an addition, I figured we could look at both. Um, this one is uh, Distinctive Frames. Um, and this is by a uh, Sanchin guy. Um, so I love framing places uh, and love trying uh, creativeness while capturing them. This photo collection consists of six images. These images were clicked at some famous monuments in Delhi. I've used long exposure, slow shutter and surrounding uh, around the monuments to get uh, some unique frames of famous monuments. So descriptions, it, artist statements lacking for me. Um, it's not personal at all. Um, it's really just telling me what I'm looking at. Um, we get it that they're, you know, they're famous monuments. Um, you're using a certain type of speed, how many images there are, but like, why, you know, like, why are you choosing to photograph these? Like, is, is it, um, is it symmetry that you love? Is it the, is it, are the, do these places mean something specific to you? Uh, I don't know. Let's take a, let's take a look at the, there's a series of four, um, you know, I, there's something really beautiful about this image and the way that it's captured, right? Because uh, you know you're saying that these are, right? There's you're saying something. They're saying that these are famous and iconic places. And I always think when I'm in a famous and iconic place, like how can I shoot this differently? And I don't think this has been done before in this place. You can just it just one hundred percent, you know, right? This is such a popular place and so well visited by Indians and foreigners equally. It's like Taj Mahal, you know, another Taj Mahal. Uh, so. I've seen like a billion pictures of this place. Even when I saw it for the first time with this perspective from him, I was blown away because that is the whole thing, you know. How do you shoot something so famous in a different way? And I never seen any image composed this way of uh, Kutub Minar, you know, going low and those, you know, dragon trees, whatever it is, you know, it looks so cool. And you know, it's interesting. I, I've never even seen an image of this place at all. But I knew just by seeing this image that this was done differently because I can tell, you know, yeah. you can tell because who frames, he's, fr he's framing it with, with these, 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 these plants in a way. And it's like this man-made structures coming out from that. It's almost like you get in the ants, the ant eye view, the insects eye view and the colors against each other, the merges against the green and yellow tones, and that light, light blue sky. It is. Now this is um, really interesting as well. I mean, the way it's shot, it, it looks to me almost like um, uh, double exposure, triple exposure, or something. I'm not sure, reflection, but it's yeah, it feels infinite. It feels like it keeps going on. Once again, I love the I love the uh, cool against the warm tones. Yeah, I mean, it's stunning. Not only knowing when to shoot, it's just the as I said, the blue hour. At the same time, again, a very popular destination, thousands of images, or millions of images from this place, literally. And this is standalone, you know, like it's perfect, like the so, previous it's a one, one of one. It's a one of one of this place. It's a true, a true yeah, one of one. It's one of one. Yeah. Even if he wants to do this again, I'm sure he can't repeat this you know, because these are all those techniques which can't be mimicked. It happens once. Even if he does it again, it may look a little bit different. Yeah, but it won't be the same one. Exactly. Yeah.
this one's different. It, it, the only thing that holds me back in this one, as opposed to the other ones, is like the symmetry that he has throughout these, exactly. and then the, this yeah. one gets cut cut off. If this went all the way through, I think this would be a stunner. Yeah. I think it would. I think it would be yeah. a winner. But because it Let's cuts off on. here, it's very distracting. Yeah, but it's well done. Very well analyzed. Yeah, exactly the same thing I was about to say. It had to be a symmetry in every sense. I mean, can it? Can it? Can we still have a symmetry in it? You know, can we still? Maybe, you know, I don't know. It'd be tough. You have to be cropped pretty yeah. tight. Maybe vertical. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it has to be cropped. But then and... it loses that sense. Yeah, but then it loses a lot of those palm trees and a lot of the. the yeah. You know, I mean, to hold that symmetry, maybe it has to be like this. Um, yeah. But. It loses a little bit of its flair, but I still think it. I still think it works. Yeah. But it's very hard. creative approach, you know, like such popular yeah. places presented so differently. That's the whole job of a photographer. Absolutely, hundred percent. And this one's wild. This one has the symmetry. You know. Now, if it was me, the third picture would not even be in the collection. I would stick to this three, strongest yeah. of the strongest, and let it be. Yeah, this for same thing for me. When I went through it, I was like, oh wow. This is about symmetry. This is about doing something differently, and this has the, this has the doing it differently part. It just doesn't have the symmetry. So it just this one just takes the cake over this one. So it's just yeah. it's not, you know. And it's almost yeah. the same structure, you know. For a non-Indian, this uh, other two, if you just go back and forth, they are almost the same structure. You know, it could have been avoided. This one could have easily be avoided. Yeah, but. Super creative. I never seen much of these kind of experimentation. It's brilliant. Yeah, it is brilliant. I love them. I love these a lot. Um, I really do. Look at, look at the price point. And Mike, what's the price? I didn't look at the price. Yeah, I was saying. I was looking at the price point. Zero point one five. Oh, that's very, 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 yeah. very cheap. Yeah, I'm, I'm very surprised that like these three aren't. You know, there's not even one collected. Um, yeah, I had to collect one of these three. I don't know, maybe, maybe because I do it's something wants me to keep going back to this one. I don't know. Has why. to be this. Has to be this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I I just keep going back to it. He has some shots up here too that aren't listed. Maybe for good reason. Maybe this is just too good compared to the, the other. The poster two. should have been header should have been better. You know, we didn't need all the images. Just one yeah. image would be enough to present it beautifully. Agreed. So, um, yeah, and so the interesting part is there's nothing sold here, and then in his other in his other one, which is also on Sloika, it's an edition of fifteen. It's another gorgeous image, and there's nothing sold. So we really need to look into like what you know. Can we look at Twitter? Oh yeah, you <laughs> did. Yeah. Well, that that was my next. Uh, so Twitter. So um, two thousand four hundred and eleven friends. Um, let's let's look at your tweets. So right now he has it listed, um, you know, and it's got some decent. Um, I'm definitely gonna retweet this. It's beautiful. Um, definitely a decent amount of retweets and stuff. Um, zero point zero two seven, very cheap. Only fifteen editions. Very smart in the way he did the editions. Um, he's uh, you know retweeting Michael Sadowski, who's a master in photography, and retweeting other people's work. Um, so really good job doing that. Yeah, I mean, can we go to the know, media, uh, media section? Yeah, let's just look at the media section. So yeah, I would talk about it more. Well, let's see. Replying to, so please show me your artwork. One piece will be chosen to be featured. So, you know, I would have added a story with this for sure. Um, rather than just posting exactly. the picture, yeah, I think you're missing an opportunity. And the link, you know, you're you're missing an opportunity to post the link and the story by just posting the picture. If you if you have all this extra space that Twitter's giving you, you know, use it up. I try to use mine up until it it says I have no characters left, <laughs> and, I, and then I send my tweet, and then I edit it based. If it doesn't have enough characters, I edit it. I take away other pieces to to make it fit. Um, this one here, uh, replying to another. 
Oh, geez, from point, like a lot of these, I guess, shill threads, post your art in the comments, follow and retweet. Um, you know, the, a lot of these shill threads are kind of BS. Um, some of them are good. You got to figure out which ones are good. This one has uh, a name, also known as the Victory Tower. It's located. But you really want to hear more of a story than that, right? It's just, it's just giving information. The price, at least they added the, um, the link and the price here. But... I'd like to know more. Yeah, like Steve Jobs says, you know, uh, he talks about Nike. They never tell our shoes are amazing. They just show the feel of it. You know, they show some people running in the zoo on the beach and feeling good about it. You know, it's all about feel, never about mm -hmm. the shoe. Absolutely. So you don't have to tell that it's a building from New Delhi. That's not important. You know, tell tell about your perspective. That's interesting. That's a cool shot, Ghost. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's 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 tough because it's it's all it's really great work, right? I mean, distinctive frames. Like, I I would remove this one to be quite honest. It's just not as strong as the others, and it's also not the same aspect ratio either. So, um, it might look better yeah. the clean clean as just three images, it has to right? Go. Yeah, it has to go. Um, and then you know, let's looking at um your warmth for the soul it's a really interesting story about this push car uh, uh the push car fair um where it's you know it's really cold and he's um you know he's he's heating up he's heating up his place for the night here it was um and it's a beautiful photograph and and the you know the amount of additions is 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 a very fair amount to me 15 additions and the price point. So there's, um, yeah, like, like I said, no sales on any of these and no sales on um, um, distinctive frames, which are beautiful. And you know, while we could say like, right, it's a soft market, um, we are seeing, we are seeing stuff move. And so, you know, I wonder maybe um, speaking about, speaking about this distinctive frames in a, in a talk space, or multiple talk spaces, um, you know, tweeting a bit about more about tweeting the three images together, these three together, or just two of these, and talking about you know how these are, um, you know, these are iconic monuments within within Delhi, India, but how you've um, taken to create a perspective that's unique to um, to your identity as a, a photographer and your perspective. You know, um, yeah, that's like, you have any other ideas, I suppose, as to how to get this stuff moving in the eyes of collectors and stuff? Because the prices are really, really good and the work is really, really good too. So I'm trying to figure out, you know, ways to help. Yeah, I mean, if you look at his, uh, in Sloika, he has another collection, uh, edition, I think. It's called a Riot, of, a Riot of Colors. It's sold out, you know, it's not like it's not sold uh, before, you know, so it's happened once before. And that one yeah, right? Of colors is fifteen pieces, stunning image, no doubt. Wow. And uh, that is sold out. So there is a possibility. Uh, what's missing? Only he yeah. could know because this has sold out. That is not sold out. So what is the reason? Well, I do. Yeah, I do think this. I think this is. I, I mean, I, I think both images are great. I think this image is extraordinary. I mean, this looks like a painting. This is, I've seen a lot of pictures of this Holy Festival, but I, I don't know that I've seen many that are this good. Or maybe any that are actually even this good. Fair. I don't know though, maybe this is, you know, this is probably minted at a different time too. So, um, is is he here? Is is, uh, is, is and Satkin here? Maybe he can speak to how that mint, uh, I don't think so. Oh, well, we can, could talk to him uh, we could talk to him after and try to tr uh, no he's here he's in the room can we unmute um the solo uh, rover and hear from him yeah sure thank you and he just got a sale on Slika. i just bought his uh edition it's beautiful awesome thank you so that's awesome congrats to both of you guys because it's a beautiful beautiful image Okay, he's unmuted. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing you bought number 12, if I had to guess. Do I want to 
just important. Oh, yes, number 12 is uh, fun. It's, it's a classic symbol of the M12. Awesome. Yeah, it's a beautiful image. So, how's it going, uh, Sanchi? Congrats on your um, on your sale just now. The Sibaldi bought one of the work for Seoul. Thank you so much, Subodh Bhai. Anytime, anytime. Not a problem. It's beautiful. I mean, it, it's supposed to move. Why it doesn't? Sometimes that's a big question, right? Yeah, even I was also wondering why it's not moving. So, how did the last one move? Yeah. I seriously don't know. It moved so fastly. Did it move? What, was it? Why? <laughs> it was in a different time. How? How? What are the? What's the separation in time frame between this mint of editions and the last mint of editions? Like, how long did you mint this one? For the, the last one I minted approximately one month back. One month back. And so the market's not that much different now, right? The market's not that much different now than it was then. And how did you, and did you share it in the same way? Did you talk about it in spaces? Did somebody big retweet it? Like, how, how do you think that, how do you think that just went so quickly? Yeah, I am sharing this image also, but I haven't shared in spaces. Did you share the other one in spaces? No, not at all. <laughs> it just sold. It's a thing too, man. It's like I was talking the other day in space. It's like success comes in waves, right? Like you know, like success comes in waves in, in this um in this space, especially I think in life in general, right? You know, like I, mean, I, I sold the one of One Piece recently, but before that I hadn't sold anything in in over two months. You know, in over two months. So, um, yeah, I feel like. You know, you're a really amazing photographer and you're always working hard and you're always supportive and sometimes things just come in waves. And so, you know, um, Sabod collected one of these today and um, I look forward to, um, you know, retweeting and seeing. Um, I, I look forward to your tweet about Sabod's sale so that we can, we can you know, make a tweet storm, or like a, not a tweet storm, a, a flurry of retweets. Uh, and congratulations. So maybe we can get more eyes here, you know, 0 0.027, uh, only 15, um, such a phenomenal image. Number one is still left. Like people love to collect number one. No one's collected it yet. So, um, I see, I see it picking up. I, I hope to see, um, a post about it so that we can share. Yeah, definitely. I will share it. And then, um, we looked at, um, we looked at your other your other collection of of, of those perspectives. Um, did you did you were you listening to our feedback? Yeah, yeah, I have listened very carefully, and I will remove one image, the third one. Yeah, I think it. I think it. I think it would help. I think. I think seeing the three of these next to each other would look really beautiful as well. Did the same aspect ratio. Um, you know, your, your, um, your perspective is really beautiful. The way you're seeing these places that are, um, that are hyper photographed because they're, they're such famous monuments, but the way you're seeing it is so differently. I think these three images next to each other will look really beautiful. And, um, I, I, I yeah, I, I have to see this selling out too, um, in the near future. I think your, um, your, your, like your, your banner, like, uh, like Sabod said, could be a little bit trimmed too. Like just, you could just do three images or you could just do one image and it could be really beautiful. But you have some images in here that are in here as well. And then you have the images in, in image in here that you're taking out. And I don't know uh, the latitude that Sloika gives you after you've already minted this. Can you still change, I'm pretty sure you could probably still change your banner, right? On the contract. Sorry? Can, can you change your banner still on the contract for yeah. Sloika? Yes, yeah, so I would. I would look at doing something a little more simple, like maybe one image across, like Sabod said, or maybe just the three images that are in the collection. But yeah, other than that, a be really beautiful work. I think your work just needs more eyes on it. You're really fantastic <laughs> at, um, at at showing perspective in a way that a lot of people aren't showing it. So, congrats on that. Thank thank you for sharing your work. And uh, I also want to add one thing that these three images are single exposure images. These are not double exposure. Oh no, I know. I I, I just they they look like real. You know, it's crazy. 
so it's single a single exposure but it's a reflection i'm guessing i mean you don't have to tell us yeah that one is uh it is a reflection yeah it's really well done i've been looking it's um, like a I mean, zoom, zoom bust right. or something yes yes it was a slow shutter and zoom bust both together is that something that is that something that nikon has specifically support or no i mean you twist the lens you know you take it from 18 mm to 15 55 mm for instance so you oh, create zoom burst, as you yeah. take a long exposure yeah you just keep slowly zooming in and sometimes yes, you yes. can't even do an immediate zoom in yeah, yeah. And it, so uh, i haven't yeah. used an tripod because tripod is not allowed so it is handheld shots awesome you're yeah. telling all these things to us you're telling all these things to us right now you know this should be your everyday gm post about how you create these things show us before yeah. after show us all the wrong attempts you know because this don't happen with one shot it there is another 30 shots before this so the wrong attempts and how you get to the right one i have yeah, approximately we... 100 times to get one image see tell the stories oh i hear you i've been i've been doing a lot of stuff like that too lately where i'm doing handheld reflections and then so, through some of the shots i'm moving my camera to get like a streak effect and it will take like um you know it'll take like 30 40 50 shots before i can even get one that i like and maybe i don't even get one that like but the process that we were talking about so i think you have a lot of stuff you could add into with your stories okay okay so uh what about the price is it okay the price is really cheap yeah i think they're i think they're okay i mean 0 0.15 is, is is a low price point on on Soika for one of ones. Actually, at the initial time, I listed it at 0.25, but after three months, when it got delisted, I uh, I released it at, at 0.15. Yeah, I mean, I guess I would just continue to try to tell the story of of the images, like you know, once you remove this one and you have these three. Um, tell the story about you know how you're how you're making a unique perspective out of something that's been photographed so many times. That's an an iconic structure, and I think nice, you can bring it. yeah. But cool, really, really great work, really beautiful work. Thank you, thank you so much. I don't know if you had any other few questions. More. Or... No, yeah, no, at no, least a uh... few more. Few more sales are coming for editions. I've been talking to some of my good friends so we'll make it move oh thank that's, you so much that's that's awesome love to hear it cool so uh, i look forward to seeing those those posts about them moving but yeah that's you're the last um if you didn't have any other questions that's the last um that's the last collection um for today um I I really appreciate you Sabon, uh being here today. Um think a lot you think of a lot of things that I um I'm not exactly looking at and then it so I I learn a lot from um <laughs> I learn a lot from it as, as well uh of how you how you no, see things. <laughs> Go ahead. Other way around. I want to be in uh, Discord and this uh AMA because I get to learn as well. But unfortunately, I never had a chance because of uh, the by rules but finally i'm glad <laughs> vpn works yeah i never used vpn in my life but today is the first time i'm using it yeah yeah i'm glad we figured out that it was the vpn was uh was holding it back and so that now you know you can do um do more of these because i think they're really really helpful um to the audience to be able to you know to be able to hear from to be able to hear from you because you've had a lot of success in the space and um you know, once once it was announced with your name, um, we had a lot of wildlife submissions and stuff come in and work that's similar to your work. So it's um, yeah, good for you to be able to uh, to talk on and talk about. We you know we talked about you know, on something big today, which is like patience. You know, like finding that scene, um, and also you know like seeing a photographer's potential and what they can create from patience. And then having other images within the same collection where you can see that, you know, this is a bit too easy for the artist, you know, uh, pointing out a lot of those things where, you know, if you just waited a bit, so I've been in my own practice focusing on this work. 
patience, 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 and, patience and everything, right? Patience in creating the artwork, patience in, um, you know, putting, putting the curation together, um, patience in, in waiting for successes within the space. Uh, patience is a, is, a, is a big one here. So I think that was a good one to hit on today. So I appreciate that. <laughs> Absolutely, Mike. And I just want to quickly go to uh, Bridges' uh, collection, if I could, because I was not here when it was going on. Bridges yeah, and wildlife. Let's let's take yeah, let's take a look at it because uh, um, this one, yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew exactly what you were talking about. Yeah. So he's releasing these in um, just like little spurts, like one at a time. So he released this one in His Majesty, and this had sold to Alpha Trilogy for 0 0.2. And then he released the one after that. And so I talked on this image earlier, but if you want to talk about this, you can. Yeah, I just, I just want to, I know Bridges is in the room. And you know about the editing part, because wildlife is one of those uh, fields where you have to be a little bit careful about how you edit, because it's very easy to cross the line and make it look a bit unnatural because this image, I know you can't zoom in on Discord, but if you are in phone, you can zoom in. There is a bit of uh, like, it almost looks like Lion is completely standing out against the background. Uh, in reality, it would be a little bit different. It's common practice to make the subject stand out and the background go dark a little. At the same time, there has to be a little bit of, uh, you know, it shouldn't look like cut out. So, Maybe, you know, if Bridges needs help, you can come over Zoom and we can sit together and I'll show you how to, how I do it so that it looks more natural. Uh, that's what I wanted to say. And the, even the other image, if you go back to the first image, there it's yeah. underdone. You know, here it's a bit overdone. The other one is a bit underdone. There was much more potential in the other image to edit and bring out the details, but it's not up to its full potential. So I just wanted to comment on the editing part because the editing plays a major role in wildlife and that makes sense this sometimes this one yeah feels a lot more true to life this one right where the other one yeah. pops and you're saying that you could push this one still a bit more i think to make it even more dramatic this could go with, with, a little with bit more eyes. that could become yeah this could go a little higher and the other one could come a little lower in terms of editing so if he needs help that's what i wanted to say come on over zoom and we can catch up and uh, we can discuss things on how to edit web. Yeah, what, what a moment he caught here, though. This must be a rare moment in wildlife to catch these three eyes, like with perfect spacing, because the one lion comes behind, right? I'm, I'm sure this is not an average catch. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's these are the moments we wait for. You know, that X factor, I, like that's my favorite word in photography, because for me, it's all about that one X factor. And here, the X factor is the lion in the background, which is trying to peep uh, through the queen. So I think that's what makes this image so powerful. And those are the few moments which we wait for, because next moment, it will be another image of wildlife with the lion and the lion is just standing next to each other. But this is the moment that we need. So yeah, I think it's really, really well done. And it tells yeah. the story, you know, lion is, is the real king and king is actually just hanging around. And this shows that she's the that's real great. boss. I love that. I was just holding Juju's head up to it too to see if I could create more eyes on there. She uh, she really pops on the on the on the screen. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but uh, yeah, no, I I love this image, and I, I agree with you. I yeah. think that I think that I think that it could add a little pop to the, a little more pop to this shot, and it could even really stand out. It's such a dramatic shot. It's just it's it's so it's very true to life, and I think it could be pushed a little bit more. So I think that's great advice, and he could do that on this one too because that one's not sold. So I think that's great. I'll let you yeah. Know. And coming back to Sachin, Sachin, you just sold another piece. It's about to be sold, sold? not exactly sold. Really? But yeah, this one, yeah, edition. Yeah. That's awesome. Good to see. I love to see live sales. It's awesome. <clears throat> So you took 12 and then one's about to go down. I think one will go next. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. So the only other collection we're in here for was actually, um, let me just look at this real quickly. I already talked a lot about Jose's collection. Um, oops. Yeah, I mean, I ran through, how to say his name? I can't pronounce his name. Uh, is it is it Jose Casal? 
Both sides? Okay, both sides. Both sides. Also, uh, so yeah. Mm -hmm. well, this is not the actual collection. I mean, this is all, this is all of his work uh, together. Trying to go back to um, I just grabbed the link from here. Actually, almost it's almost nothing. This is what it's called. Almost nothing. You know, I, I was talking about I before about love the. Ahead. The yeah. title is absolutely perfect, you know, almost nothing. It's such a cool title. Yeah, isn't it cool how the how you how the um the the water merges with the sky? Like there's no horizon line in these shots. I noticed that all throughout um the artist's work is that they really create that um where it just feels very fine art and really really minimalistic because there's no horizon line. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of, uh, oh, oh, oh man, I'll struggle with this name, but I'm a huge fan, fan of his work. You know, it's, it's like a signature, you know, when we talk of signature, when I see these images, I know it's him because he has a tone that he follows, which is more of a bluish, silverish kind of a feel, extremely yeah. minimal. i never seen more minimal images than these. And, you know, he reminds me of my good friend, Sajin, who does exactly these kind of things, but in black and white. So it's such a fine art uh, signature, it's hard to miss. I can tell yeah. you, and it's right away. from my level. Yeah. It's funny, it's exactly what I said when I looked at his images before, and I, when you weren't here, I was saying that um, I could see one of Jose's images, and I know that it's him. You know? The first image, what's the title of that? Yeah, this it's one, title, number one. It's title number one. I mean, I think it's because there's spray painted one on here. I think it's the weakest one in the collection. Exactly. I was about to say that, you know, it doesn't feel, like I said, the signature of him is the free flow of the images. You know, there's nothing stopping the image. You just flow with the image. But here, the subject is so strong and it's so hard to, like, it's not a beautiful uh, yeah. structure, whatever it could be. You know, it doesn't have the feel of free flow. It stops the image right away. It's very heavy, which is not it also, yeah, it's I agree. flow. I feel it's like a bit, I feel like you could feel the editing in this too, like the vignetting, like there's a vignette on this image. Whereas yeah, um, yeah. the other ones, you know, they, they don't, you know, they don't have that vignette. It's just, it's so pure and so clean. Um, and it's images more, are light, you know, like when you, when you look at the weight of the image, all these images feel like they're floating free. But this first mm -hmm. image is so heavy because of that center element. It just sits there. You know, it doesn't feel like his work. So when I was running through this work, I was thinking about that. Like, I couldn't recognize this image from all the other images. Yeah, that's, that's a really good thing to point out. That I, I that I do agree with him. When I'm looking at these, it's definitely the least successful for me as far as just seeing his signature style and just how beautiful these are floating in nothingness. Where that one just feels, um, it feels a bit more forced for uh, for Jose actually. So. Exactly. And I hope it's uh, saying it correctly. Yeah. Because even uh, if you look at them just right now in the thumbnails, all the other three images look like one family, uh, with the color tone, with the perfect, uh, oh, yeah. non invisible horizon and all that. But even the first image just kind of uh, completely stands out as not part of that collection. It looks very. Mm -hmm. Others are effortless. This one looks like a lot of work has been put into making yeah. it look good. Looks like more effort than than his other work that feels very very yeah. effortless and very very signature to his style. And I like I like the price point. It's it's a bit higher than his last collections that sold out. And I think that's a good idea to just raise your price a little bit to um you know to go in an upward trajectory as an artist. So, um, yeah, cool. That's the only so, way out. Go up. Yep. So these two collections that when Sabot wasn't here, they got to get reviewed twice. So. <laughs> you guys didn't miss out um but yeah i think i mean i think that concludes the the um the ama though it's uh yeah once again thanks again so much to have you here and uh now we can have you here um more because uh we figured out the issue with the discord and vpn and always thanking uh meta jungle for like giving this platform uh where truly like all ships rise with pride here uh, everybody's like everyone's here for one another and um and it's yeah it's it's uh, it's a it's so it's been a place meta jungle since i first started where uh where i could learn 
uh, and have the ability to also teach. So it, it provides that 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 place where um, we're we're first learning and we can become educators here too. So it's it's a really it's been always been a really great place. Uh, so glad to have uh, MetaJuggle as a platform to let me and Sabod um, do uh, educational AMA. Uh, so really really happy with that. I think I think Goon um, has some po apps for us. That's uh, that's in the, the little chat bubble um, uh, here, so we can grab our pull apps. So thanks everybody who uh, who came today too. Yeah, thank you thanks, everyone. Man. Thanks, Mita Jingu. Thanks, Super. Thanks, Goon. Uh, you've been you've been so supportive in sorting this out. So I'm glad it's over. Not a problem. Just message me anytime. Cool. Thanks, thanks for everybody so who came. Bye everyone. All right. Bye bye guys. Good night.